Hagman and Hagman Report for today. It is Monday, June 15th, 2015. We're coming to you live back on the ground here and from the Hagman and Hagman Studios in beautiful Northwest Pennsylvania. I'm Doug Hagman at the helm of fellow investigator, fellow investigator, researcher, and most importantly, my son Joe Hagman. Together we are the Hagman and Hagman Report, America's premier father-son investigative reporting team. Our job is to bring you the news that propels the headlines, the news that is shaped and twisted and convoluted and hidden in the mid of fun house of smoke and mirrors in the carnival that we call the corporate media. We do the headline and news triage so you don't have to. I want to thank everyone, all the new listeners for checking in from all over the world. We've got a couple of people checking in from Canada over the weekend. Thank you so much. Uh, for new listeners, we broadcast live every Monday through Friday from 8 to 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Our home base on the Internet is Hagman and Hagman.com. And I want to thank you, um, uh, thank you uh, everyone, for, for bookmarking that website. Uh, we are doing some amazing things here, um, or we'll, we'll be actually in the next couple of days. Uh, so stay tuned. That's Hagman and Hagman.com. From there, you can access us live as well as all of our past shows and social networking sites, most importantly, our individual, in the original investigative reports. And right now, on Hagman and Hagman.com, if you click on the, well, if you go to Hagman and Hagman.com on the main, uh, the main story there, um, got to tell you, we put up a video. It's a two-minute, it's just a little over two minutes. We were in Washington, D.C. over the weekend. And uh, with Coach Dave Daubenmeyer, the Salt and Light Brigade, what a fantastic man. I mean, what a fantastic group of people. What a fantastic – it was just – the people there were just tremendous. We're going to be talking about that and so much more tonight. The topic of tonight's program is the power behind the veil, kind of part two, what we started talking about on Friday. And we'll be um, intertwining some important news as well. Tonight's broadcast, folks, sponsored by Nature Box. I got to tell you, we love Nature Box. Took Nature Box with us to Washington D.C. Nature Box ships great tasting and guilt-free snacks right to your door. They've got over a hundred flavors to choose from, and you can pick out so many. It depends on what your, oh, it depends on what your taste are. For example, sweet and salty, or tangy, or fruity, or whatever. They've got so many things. Things like potato, p- p- yeah. <laughs> I can eat them, but can I describe them? Pistachio power clusters. How about Big Island pineapple? Oh, the uh, mini Belgian waffles. I have no problem pronouncing or saying or uh, eating those. So, which ones did you take to Washington? Because I didn't see any. I, I kept it hidden from you. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> if you would have checked in the inside pocket in my garment bag, it would have been there. But uh, I had actually hidden from you, the Strawberry Lemonade Fruit Stars, which, you know, not a star to spare. (laughs) (laughs) Folks, try NatureBox for free. Go to naturebox.com slash CFP radio. That's naturebox.com slash CFP radio. Or go to hagmanandhagman.com. Scroll all the way down to the bottom left there, and you can find a picture of NatureBox. Click on that. And, you know, try it for free. Look, you can't beat that. Uh, my goodness, yeah. So, you know, the Belgian waffles are history. I mean, I, gone, 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 gone. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, before uh, Joe, it's it's uh, we had a kind of a busy weekend. Um, my goodness, we we left uh, early. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we left we early Saturday morning. Uh, traveled to Washington D.C. Got there. Um, I laid over in Virginia. I, I, what was it? Uh, Saturday. It was, yeah, it was Saturday night. Vienna, Virginia. Yeah, and now it's seven miles from the downtown DC. And then um, and traveled into DC early Sunday morning. Met up with the Salt and Light Brigade coach Dave Dobmeyer, the fine people there. Shortly before, or shortly after eleven o'clock in the morning, it was so hot um, and so humid. I just want to thank the the kind people there. In one of the interviews, in fact, the interview with Coach Dave Dobbenmeyer, what a great lady. He comes up and puts an umbrella over both the uh, coach and myself. and um, we met some just wonderful people there, just tremendous people. Um, Catherine Crable, 
uh, the author of some articles, a tremendous author, a uh, tremendous writer. She was there. Many others. Um, many, many others. Just so great to meet each and every one of you. Sally, God bless you. Um, no, I can go, go on and on and on. But, you know, it, it was just a, a great time. But if I can call your attention to Hagman and Hagman.com and then click on the... Um, uh, uh, the article about the Salt and Light Brigade descending upon the Supreme Court, and then click on the video. Okay, it's just over two minutes. There, there's there's two aspects to this. Of course, <laughs> you'll have to forgive my appearance. Uh, my wife looked at it and said, uh, "Did you forget your comb?" You know, it was <laughs> it was windy and. It was hot, and I mean, I, we were soaked. Uh, Joe and I were just absolutely drenched uh, from sweat. And uh, of course, we wore black, which you know was really smart of us. And right? Somebody, Sean Nikes, brought uh, cold bottles of water, and uh, oh man, that, that, that was saved awesome my, because that saved uh, me. I drank most of it and dumped the rest, on my and it was uh, yeah, uh, it was perfect. So if you're listening out there, whoever brought that water, thank you so much. Well, so, so each and every person that we met, it, it was just it was just so great. Um, but the the reason I'm calling your attention to the uh, the video is this is one thing that we're going to be doing more of, and that is bringing to you original video content. The video that you see there was taken with our new. Uh, studio quality camera, high definition camera, and our new acoustical sound equipment. And um, tell us what you think. It, 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 really, this is um, this is you folks helping us build this from the ground up. This ministry, this this radio, this research project that we're doing, and. Um, just want to thank you for it, and you know, all, as always, we want to be good stewards with, with everything, um, and, and and make the right decisions, and, and just do everything right, you know. So, tell us what you think about the quality. I, I think it's pretty good, uh, excellent, as a matter of fact. And we took other videos. If you, um, I'm not sure how to do this. Well, we'll put up a, a link to the video channel. We started a new video channel. I'm not sure if it's going to if it's in the if it's in the interim channel or if it's going to be our permanent home. It's actually under my my name, but it's the programs channel. I, I'm not sure how we're going to do this. Um for, we'll figure it out though. Yeah. It's not too difficult. But you can you can go to uh it's actually again the YouTube channel is under my name. Well, the one video there is sufficient. You can see and then there's the only other one I added was um, in an interview with a, a young man that was traveled from North Carolina to be uh, to be yeah, there. Yeah, North Carolina, Connecticut, South Carolina. Yeah, it came from all over Ohio. Uh, it was uh, really something else. And you know, a lot of times we think of standing in front of government buildings and and protesting, but this was something so different because this was not a protest. This was uh, a prayer, open prayer, and they, and. Uh, there were prayers for each individual uh, Supreme Court justice. There were prayers for them as a whole. There were prayers for their discernment. There was no, you know, uh, the only thing that was not being done was, was prayer. And I think uh, too often we see, whether it's abortions uh, that are being protested against, you know, people, it seems to be a, a hostile environment. Not that the people are wrong for protesting it, but if more people were to gather in prayer, I think it would be much more effective than protest. You know, I, I've I've been at a couple, not, not that many, but a couple of I'll call them rallies, and this had a very different feel to it. This was a very well solemn assembly, as it was called, and right. and, and it really had a, a very a very good feel to it. Where the other ones were political, they were um, agenda driven. I, I suppose this was agenda driven too, but it was more uh, heavenly guided than politically agenda earthly driven. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. All right. Yeah, and Coach Dob Myers is is just one of the to me one of the greatest guys I know. I mean, I, man, I'll tell you, have him. You know, I'm glad he's on our side. I I really am. Um, he is he is just a, a tremendous guy. Uh, his, his heart is 
bigger than 20 people's hearts, you know. His intent is pure. Um, you know, and, and, he, and he too is putting all he's got uh, right where it counts. And you talk about being a good steward. My goodness, he, um, I mean, no sleep, <laughs> traveling, you know, on, on, a, on a shoestring. And, uh, he, he, God love the man. I mean, he's just a beautiful, just a beautiful man. I mean, you know, and I mean that with all respect. Just a great guy. So having said all of that, the uh, the day before, I, I should note this, when we arrived there on Saturday, uh, one thing that, that was interesting is that, and, and I'm not even sure, I did, I did not mention this to Coach, and I'm not sure, Joe, if you did either, but uh, on Saturday there was a gay, lesbian, transgendered pride parade that was in, in D.C. Yeah, we did hear about that. Yeah. And um, we listened to Rick Wiles the day before we left, and he talked about in Israel there was, or in Jerusalem, there was a... And Tel Aviv. Yeah, and it was uh, supported and uh, not only that, praised by Netanyahu. Which, uh, I guess I never researched his uh, positions on uh, such matters, but a little surprising. Yeah, indeed. Well, let me start this out here, uh, tonight's program, in very consistent with the uh, with the title, and then we're going to get into some news. But um, <clears throat> excuse me, just briefly. On Friday, we talked about the power behind the, the people in power, and and I think what we're seeing with respect to the um, uh, the homosexual agenda. In fact, I know what we're seeing with respect to the homosexual agenda, and just about everything else you can actually put your f- fingers on, or you can see taking place is a result of the power behind the veil. I mean, the, the people in power are are the foot soldiers, if you will, for the people behind the veil, behind the uh, curtain. And there are, well, obviously, the, the 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 people that are really in power, the, the most secret society in the world is the Committee of 300. And, of course, uh, we spoke about them on, on uh, Friday. Now, I'm going to be getting into more here about the Committee of 300, but in the meantime, let me tell you about the Tavistock Institute of Human Relations, because one of the major and most insidious and most powerful institutions in the world, if you haven't, folks, if you had never heard of this this group, if you haven't, or even if you have, it's it's good to just kind of as a refresher here to talk briefly, to address briefly about Tavistock Institute of Human Relations. It was established in 1921 by the Royal Institute of International Affairs. That's R-I-A-A. Now, this is the Tavistock. Paul McGuire talks about this, the Tavistock Institute, and they have infiltrated all segments of our society. It's really um, mass manipulation through crisis creation. Let me say that again. It's mass manipulation mind manipulation through crisis creation. It was founded in 1921, but later funded in large part by the Rockefeller Foundation. Surprise, surprise, right? The Tavistock Institute serves as the nerve center for global manipulation of human consciousness. One of the co-founders was John Rawlings, uh, I'm sorry, John Rawlings Rees, R-E-E-S. The Tavistock became, the Institute became the core of the of Britain's Psychological Warfare Bureau. In fact, during the war, especially after the First World War, but more importantly after the Second World War, they studied shell shock, the effect of shell shock on soldiers. They had a role in creating the OSS here in the United States, which, of course, is a predecessor for the CIA. And uh, the, another co-founder, or, or this program in particular, was founded by Dr. Kurt Lewin, L-E-W-I-N. 
in the 1950s, they were um, did a lot of research on microwave weapons, microwave weapons on British on the British population, and, and some of the um, bleed into the United States, but uh, some of the, the mental um, mental work, uh, mental manipulation was at the it was crafted at the hands of Alan Dulles. Name sounds familiar, right? Alan mm-hmm. Dulles of the Dulles Brothers, and also some of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff. Interesting. And Tavistock is closely related to the Club of Rome. Uh, the Tavistock Institute was a major force behind the creation of NATO and connected to the Club of Rome via the guy by the name of Alexander King, a co-founder of the Club of Rome. Now, why is all this important? Well, Joe, uh, we had talked about, listened to, and studied, researched on the way to D.C., or on the way back, or both, I'm not sure which, uh, um, the, the influence of rock music, in particular the Beatles back in the 60s, Remember the British invasion of the Beatles here. If you're of like it was yesterday, yeah. Uh, if you're if you're <laughs> as old as I am, um, you'll understand the effect that the Beatles had on on the uh, the influential population here in in the country, the younger demographic. And even when the and I remember when the Beatles broke up, the women were crying, girls were crying. And, Oh, it's crazy. But the Tavistock Institute was behind this. And there's an interesting story about the Beatles last year, twenty I think it was 2014, the 50th uh, anniversary of the British invasion, so to speak. But uh, we, we need to get into that because you'll see from that how this, uh, and Aleister Crowley was connected into this, the Beach Boys, Charles Manson, the things that Paul McGuire talk about. And write about, and of course, a good primer on all of this. Good information is the uh, uh, all of Paul McGuire's books, but in particular, a Prophecy of the Future of America and Mass Awakening. And then, of course, um, all of his books in between, including Standing Down Goliath. But in particular, Prophecy of the Future of America and Mass Awakening. Now, the uh, Again, the, the Tavistock and the Club of Rome, they worked together or are working together to create propaganda to manipulate the population. And this manipulation is toward a collective, collective, yeah. Collectivist. Thank you. That, what he said. <laughs> One world communist dictatorship. Now, some say socialist dictatorship, but. It's really a communist dictatorship. And, and this is through trauma-based mind control. And, and if if you think about this, they call it, you know what they call it? They call it future shock, which happens to be the origin for Alvin Toffler's future shock, the book of the same name. The... One of the objectives of the Tavistock Institute is to let you know or to convince you that everything you see around you, or at least the important things, the spontaneous occurrences, it's all spontaneous. Think Arab Spring. Or think, uh, uh, I, I mean, think of any tr- anything traumatic that could have happened uh, or would have happened or has happened, uh, including 9-11 and other terrorist attacks. But the fact is, not spontaneous occurrences, just the opposite is true. Today, and, and recently, and, and even through today, the Tavistock Institute operates through a variety of organizations, through NGOs, universities. And, and what they're doing is they're breaking down the moral fabric that has held and continues to hold the West together. Think, therefore, about the homosexual agenda you know, three and a half percent, generously, uh, are homosexuals, bisexuals, transgendered, and all this. They relate to that particular uh, mindset. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you something. Um, 
Uh, you have to have something a little, something better, something more propelling you than merely um, that three and a half percent. Let's be some bigger, bigger part behind it. Well, the Tavistock Institute is behind it. Breaking down again the moral fabric that holds the West together, and um, they're responsible for the creation of, or you know, the um, um, funding of, and the organization influencing of the Stanford Research Institute. Places like, and these are examples here: the Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania. The Sloan School at MIT, the Heritage Foundation, the Rand Corporation, Brookings Institute. Okay, now that's the Tavistock Institute, a uh, multi layered organization. Their, uh, uh, their largest institute, by the way, inside the United States is MIT. And MIT works through, or these other Organizations work through the MIT, but there's a um, hand in hand, hand in glove relationship with NASA. And listen to this, folks: the National Council of Churches, as the well World as Council or National Council of Churches, National Council okay. of Churches, and also the U.S. Navy, Army, uh, Treasury, Department of State. Um, they, you know, when you hear things like sensitivity, diversity training, sensitivity training. Well, they are the ones behind those terms. They, meaning the Tavistock, ultimately the Tavistock. Their ultimate goal is to break down individual identity, political correctness. It's all about creating uniformity as opposed to individualism. Because you see, if everyone starts thinking alike and conforming to this this, um, larger goal, well, they're easier to control. Now, in the in, behind everything, behind everything, uh, behind the machinations of a new world order, this one world government conspiracy, is the Committee of 300. And, and to understand how vast and all pervasive the new world order conspiracy is, um, you got to take a look at the goals of the Committee of 300. And again, this is a continuation of Friday's show. So a caller had uh, called in and said, uh, spoke about, I think it was the 23 goals. I mean, the, the number of goals are 23 of, of the uh, stated goals of the uh, Committee of 300. But the uh, just a few things here quickly before uh, getting into hey, the goals. Yeah, you are, because right, I'm... Yeah. Doing some, uh, I was telling people, I told you about the iBooks app on right. Correct. Uh, the new iPhone. Well, I found uh, so many more books that are free. I mean, a lot of books you, they charge for, but usually the uh, unimportant fictional romance, you know, garbage. The free books are books like the with the historical significance, morals and dogma, um, the secrets to Freemasonry by William Morgan. I'm going. I've been going through that book, and I was reading it in the car yesterday on the way back. And um, there is some some excellent information and insight in here. And I think it's either been overlooked or uh, or what, what in morals and dogma or no, in, in, in the uh, my book uh, William yeah. uh, Captain William Morgan, the mysteries of Freemasonry. Oh, and, and, oh, and we went yeah. to in Washington. We yeah. went to the temple, the Freemasonic temple in Washington. Yes, we did. We got some we got some uh, pictures of of that as well, and it's you talk about symbolism. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my goodness. Well, what'd you think of that? I, I mean, right in the belly of the beast, there is this is this Freemason temple that Tom Horn talks about, and Tom Horn had the uh, to, I was going to say privilege, but I would say more tenacity to go in and uh, to work the people inside and, and get into the library, see the. Well, if we had more time, I'd have tried. But yeah, he, uh, well, definitely. we're going to be going back. And, it was uh, uh, interesting though, because for people who haven't seen it, um, I need to find the correct image. You know, the all-seeing eye is the triangle. One of the images that they have right in above the, the front doors, and it's huge, is this triangle. It didn't really have an eye inside of it, but it had those points of light they call them radiating out from there. On either side uh, of the 
steps uh, walking up to the front door were what are those things in front of the pyramids? Those uh, Egyptian, they look like <laughs> well, like uh, I, I want to say just not gargoyles, but um, yeah, so, it, they statues, were Babylonian statues. in nature. It, I mean, just like the rest of Washington D.C., uh, it's like a a resurrection of old Egypt under um, yeah. the you know before the flood. If we, yeah. I guess we haven't seen that, but. The symbolism is there for a reason. The, uh, you know, temple is something uh, resembling the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court looked the same, only they had different uh, images or statues on either side. And there, minus the uh, yeah. big eye uh, that they had. There's a lot of symbolism. And, and I, I know, ladies and gentlemen, you know all of this, okay? But when you take a look at the symbolism through the, the lens of what we're seeing happen today, through the lens of current events, okay, and work backwards. Um, you know, so when we worked, and I know when I worked, uh, some, some pretty heavy-duty fraud investigations, complex fraud investigations, so you could never get enough eyes, trained eyes on the details of the investigation. So, you know, people like Tom Horn, who have, who have done this research? It's, it's not we're not redoing what he's done. Um, we know we're looking at what he's done and then doing some doing some additional things uh, as well and f- from a different perspective and um, in bringing it to the present with respect to the uh, events that are taking place. Because within this symbolism, there are not only uh, not, the relevance is not just for you know p- times past, but also for the future. What's ahead of us, and uh, the game plan is, is exposed. Which again, we're going to get into more of that tonight, because some of the news items are going to indicate, and especially from the, the Vatican, the leaked document from the Vatican, which Joe grabbed and. Uh, I think Joe grabbed it before anyone else did. I know. I know it's written in Italian. It was leaked to time. Which yeah, you also have to understand too. Written in Italian, and I do have the translated version. Or leaked by time. I shouldn't say to time. Um, you have to understand a lot of this. These are head games, and this when, when they say leaks, this is not intentional. I mean, this is, some of this is intentional. But, no, and um, one thing that's very interesting. I started reading, and there's a few pages, and just the first few pages, and I just want to uh, read one of the pages here, uh, and we can get into this later, yeah, as I go through it. But tell me, for this, the the being the Pope um, issuing this, um, this sounds very uh, new age, <laughs> new age, um, earth he, worship. He's a deist. He goes deist. on to say, "This is uh, Francis C. C. <laughs> Or Francis of Assisi, uh, in this beautiful song we remember, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, it gave us that our common home is also a sister with whom we share the existence, and as a beautiful mother who welcomes us into his arms. Praise be me, Lord, through sister Mother Earth, who sustains and governs us. By the way, the pronouns in the tr- in the uh, in the transliteration, or the... Yeah, the pronouns are messed up. That should be her, not his. But anyway. Yeah, so he is <coughs> praising the Lord for Mother Earth who sustains and govern, governs us. And he see, should be disqualified from ever holding a – from a bishop to a pope. Um, but this is consistent with the uh, female deity worship that we see, especially at this time after the spring equinox or you know getting into the summer. Um we're still not there. It's at the summer yet. So this this is consistent time wise. No, it, it, when they release the text, for example, the dates that, that they're released on hold extreme significance in the Masonic like um, structure. So now, see, Joe and I are starting to put you know put, put this together a little more, and we're seeing uh, this pattern. That's always been there, but we're now we're understanding the pattern, and we're able to basically describe it to, to our listeners and say, okay, this is kind of what's going on. And from this pattern, we can we can connect the dots and project into the future, and hopefully, hopefully, 
you know, uh, spoil their plans, at least spoil their surprise plans. And, and I'll just mention this, too. Um, how can I put this? With we uh, we we are going back to to Washington. Um, um, July. Yeah, but we were we had to disappear um, before the event on Sunday was o- over. So somebody looking for us, you know where where'd they go? Well, um, let me fast forward to say that that um, hopefully we will be able to provide you information, credible information from somebody who really wants to get the information out there and has the ability, has a position to to, to, to be in the know. Um, very surprising information, very surprising level of source. So anyway, I want to say that. So. It, it, but but get, just really quickly, getting back to the Committee of 300, their goals. Now, you know, the name New World Order, it, it's, well, it's, it, it's perceived by a lot of people as, as something that developed as a consequence of the 1991 Gulf War. You remember that when George Bush came out. Um, <clears throat> whereas the idea of a one world government is recognized. It's known to be ages, ages, ages old. Where did this originate? It it, it had its origin with the East India Company. That was chartered by Queen Elizabeth I back in 1600 as a joint stock company. That I just wanted to mention that. Just put that in the back of your mind, folks. Kind of file that back in, in the back of your mind. Remember East India Company. And then remember the British East India Company. Two separate things, an evolution of the first. But anyway, so this goes back to the 1600s, early 1600s. So we see that the world, New World Order is not new. It's been developing under one or another different iteration for a very, very long time, or guys, or pretext, whatever you want to call that. The father of the New World Order was the London Mercer Company. If you want to go back further, the grandfather was the London Staplers, going back to the German Hansa and the Hansa of Belgium, all the way back to India. From this background arose the East India Company, some of whose board members were from the Anabaptist communists. Now, Dr. John Coleman is the foremost researcher in the form. Yeah, I mean, he's the, the top expert on the Committee of 300. Um, and I do recommend his book, The Committee of 300, The Conspirators' Hierarchy, fourth edition. And I believe some of it's online. You can, if you just uh, search, you can just read through it, and it's an eye-opening um, expose. But um, I'd mentioned the Club of, Club of Rome earlier in conjunction with the Tavistock Institute. Well, the, the Club of Rome is a conspiratorial umbrella organization. It's actually a marriage between the Anglo-American financiers and the old black nobility families of Europe, particularly the so-called nobility of London, Venice, and Genoa. Okay. Um, the the key to the successful control of the world really lies in their ability to create and manage uh, savage economic recessions and ultimately depressions, which we are seeing take place, or we're at the precipice right now, the Committee of 300 looks to these social convulsions um, globally, on a global scale, followed by depressions. And, well, they look at this as a softening up technique for bigger things to come. And as the principal method for creating masses of people all over the world who who will become its welfare recipients of the future, 
Now, we saw this happen on a smaller scale here in the United States. People wonder why this mass influx of illegal aliens and all, we're giving away everything to these people. What's this about? It doesn't make any sense. And, and a lot of people, and I mention this often, will say, well, it's all about registering Democratic voters. Well, man, you know, you got to think bigger because it's more than that. It's it's to it's to overload the system, create the the social convulsion here in the United States, which will cause a depression, and, and that's going to soften soften us up for bigger things. And um, I mean that's what this is all about. Now, the um, I'll just get right into the the well, the Club of Rome. It's interesting because they have their own private intelligence agency and also borrows from the uh, from David Rockefeller's Interpol. Every intelligence agency in the United States cooperates very very closely with Interpol, as did hey the KGB before the fall of the Soviet Union. the The only agency that remained beyond its reach. Uh, was the East German Intelligence Service, the Stasi. Now, the Club of Rome has its own highly organized political and, e and economic agencies. It, it was the Club of Rome folks who told Reagan to retain the services of Paul Volcker. Volcker was a member of the Committee of 300. Now, you may recall that Volcker stayed on as the Federal Reserve Board Chairman. Um, and you, you might also remember that um, Reagan said that he would be dismissed as soon as he was elected. Remember that? Going to get rid of Volcker as soon as I'm elected? Well, what changed? Was it a change of heart of Ronald Reagan? No. It was on the instruction of the Club of 300. Or in the Club of Rome, I'm sorry. The Club of Rome also played a key role in the Cuban Missile Crisis. They attempted to sell its crisis management uh, to, to, to the federal government. It's interesting because FEMA is an outgrowth of this component of the Club of Rome. <clears throat> Several Tavistock scientists went to see um, Kennedy at the time to explain... Uh, you know what was going on, but the president rejected the advice that they gave that same year. By the way, Kennedy was shot; his head was blown off. Tavistock was back in Washington to talk with NASA. This time, the the talks were successful. Tavistock was given a contract by NASA to evaluate the effect of its coming space program on, on American public opinion. The contract was farmed to the Stanford Research Institute and the Rand Corporation. You see how all of these organizations, these think tanks, thanks, tanks, these NGOs are all kind of intertwined. Much of the material produced by Tavistock, Stanford, Rand, and so on, never, ever, ever saw the light of day. And it remained sealed right to the present day. And, you know, several Senate oversight committees and subcommittees who were approached claims they never heard of. Never heard of it. <laughs> That's the power behind the Club of 300, or the Committee of 300 and the Club of Rome. Um, quickly, again, I say this. Let me just go over the... Uh, Oh, you know, I probably should point out right here real quick. Um, NATO, of course, uh, convergence of NATO. This is all part of the New World Order. The Club, club of, uh, yeah. Uh, actually, NATO um, well, NATO was not an original idea you know when it was when it was actually conceived it was actually thought of back in the early 1900s by the committee of 300 
Stalin totally opposed the concept of NATO. Of course, Stalin would. Of course, Russia would. The USSR at the time would. Um, but on the flip side of that, Stalin knew the bigger plans. Okay, I'm not I'm not sticking up for Stalin at all. Just identifying the players here. So when you look at Putin, and, and there's this deification of Putin, or at least this uh, this feeling that Putin, you know, no, Putin has more respect than uh, our our politicians. You can see why, because they know what what the bigger game plan is. And the West, the Western leaders are, are all of the Western leaders are, are really pushing for this one world order. And the pushback is from people like Putin, who are, and I know it sounds convoluted, especially when you look at the attempt to, for, or the, especially when you look at the new world order being this communist system. Well, why wouldn't the Russia, why wouldn't uh, uh, China be be excited about something like this? Because they wouldn't be running it. You see, there are fights within the larger families of the Illuminati, of the Committee of 300, of of the power behind the power. There are internal fights as well. And, and this is more difficult to explain. This is more esoteric in nature, but you have to think of it, too, as a sexual fight. Who will be on top? And I don't want to sound crass. I guess it's too late for that, but but that's how they think. It's 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 kind of a control domination thing, at least in their mind, because a lot of the uh, a lot of this is ceremonial. A lot of this fighting is ceremonial in nature. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, but um, okay. Let me just quickly get into the, the twenty three goals by the Committee of 300. And, and folks, tell me how close we are, or you know, think about how close we are to the culmination of these 23 goals, or the establishment of these 23 goals. You know, I should point out, too, and I'm sure many people know this, a name that the Committee of 300 goes by, the Olympians. Okay? So, sometimes the name of the group, it, it's interchangeable. The Olympians or uh, Committee of 300, but, but they call themselves the Olympians because they, they really believe that they're equal in power and equal in stature to the legendary gods of Olympus. Lucifer, Lucifer is their god, and they've set themselves above the true god, believing that they've been charged with implementing by divine right, these 23 goals. And the first one is to establish a one-world government, a new world order with a unified church and monetary system under their direction. Now, the one-world government began setting up its church back in the 1920s and 1930s. This group realized, for example, the, Olymp the Olympians and the Committee of 300, they realized the need for a religious belief inherent in mankind must have an outlet. They've got to have a church. They've got to have a religion or, or a religious philosophy or direction. And therefore, they set up a church body to channel that belief in the direction they desired. So the organized religions of today are pretty much channeled through or at least managed by the Tavistock Institute, the the Olympians, the Committee 300, and so on. Number two, to bring about the utter destruction of all national identity and national pride. Okay. Um, to engineer and bring about the destruction of religion. And in particular, the Christian religion, true Christian religion, with one exception a one-world government concoction of beliefs. Number four, to establish the need to control and cash, uh, or, yeah, well, to establish the ability to control each and every per person 
through means of mind control. Now, Brzezinski talked about this in Technotronics, where human-like robots, genetically uh, modified, genetically engineered clones would be made and established, the system would be established of terror through this system. Zygnu Brzezinski, Technotronics, another important piece of the New World Order puzzle, the five, to bring it into all industrialization, to bring it into the production of nuclear-generated electrical power. They call this the post-industrial zero-growth society. Didn't Obama, and this is a question, I'm not even sure, um, didn't Obama have a, a book in his hand, wasn't he photographed with post-industrial America or something, or yeah, the world. Uh, uh, yeah, <clears throat> when he was on the post American sure. world, something along those lines. All right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know where the TPA is and TPP is relevant today. Uh, NAFTA, GATT. Well, it's relevant today because look what happened in 1993. What we saw in 1993, when the passage of the of NAFTA went through, and then it through GATT and the World Trade Organization, what we saw was the people here in the United States, in the wake of this industrial destruction, turned to what? Well, a lot of these people, they turned to um, drugs. They turn to self-destructive behavior in what a way to assist uh, the elimination of excess population. Just check out the Global 2000 report. <clears throat> the sixth uh, goal, to encourage and eventually legalize the use of drugs and, and make pornography an art form. Hmm. Gee whiz. Um Put mainstream or put pornography. Get an art form. Yeah, yeah. But and, and, so and, going beyond a a carnal nature, making it appealing to maybe those who wouldn't use it for a sexual purpose, <clears throat> I suppose, or, or to draw people in. Because I asked because you know reading this, going back over morals and dogma, and reading the, the uh, secrets of Freemasonry by uh, what's the name here, William. Uh, Morgan, it talks about the arts a lot. Right. You know, uh, literature, the arts, uh, arts and crafts, not like your uh, grade school arts and crafts class. But, uh, they're talking about uh, hall of music, the entertainment. Yep. And, and this is uh, a way that they infiltrate through seemingly uh, harmless uh, ways, and they're becoming more harmless or more harmful now as we see how bold they are becoming. But there are subtleties and undertones and, and purposes behind um, a lot of what we see, the symbolisms. Very um, much. And, you know, it is uh, these people who think they have all, all this all knowing wisdom, they think they uh, uh, are above or will define in their. Literature, they act like the uh, Lord had uh, decreed them to to be the evil in the world. Right. Well, and, um, yes. What they're attempting to do is make pornography more palatable and make it push it into the mainstream. And this goes hand in hand with the uh, destruction of the moral fabric through the homosexual agenda, which is extremely vital. It's critical to their goals that the homosexual agenda be accomplished because that destroys the moral fabric of our country and uh, of our population. And it's going to be done on a national level, at the Supreme Court level, and legitimizing the um, uh, this abomination of marriage. I mean, and I know Greg Jackson says, you know, he doesn't want to call it traditional marriage. and it, it, No, no, it's just marriage, period, 
but anyway, um, pornography is part and parcel to it, it was a critical component to this. And in, in um, we can see this today. What's that new show, Joe? Sex Box, where they where they have uh, on live television now. They have that was a show. I don't know if it's still a show anymore. Okay, but I think that's that's part of it. so long, um, and I haven't done an advertisement in a, in a long time. But they have the TV shows about the um, uh, a lot of new TV shows about dead people rising. Uh, All right, uh, becoming us, I think, is one. Um, okay. There was another one about these people who would die and wake up, and then they. And I've never seen these shows. I'm going by what the preview uh, on A and E. There was a, the Bates Motel show. There was one before uh, where they show people dying and coming back, and then the, in the previews, they, you know, they go back to their loved ones, and the, you see the the quick clips where they say, "I don't think this person is," you know, "I don't think they're who they were," and they, they hint to the fact that they're. Not the old, old people that died. Said they are new, uh, inhabited or new beings inhabiting those old bodies. Kind of like the um, Stephen King Pet Cemetery. Hey, not quite acting like my dog. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I get that. Hmm. Okay. Well, it's it it really the bigger thing here is to destroy Western culture. The seventh goal was to bring about up the popula- bring about the population of large cities. Now, if you look at what happened, what uh, Pol Pot did, what the Pol Pot regime did in Cambodia. If you, if you look at Pol Pot's genocidal plans, well, they were drawn up in the United States by the one of the Club of Rome's research foundations and overseen by Thomas Enders, who was a high-ranking State Department official. Can you believe that? No. I mean, yes, but it's... <laughs> I guess, you know, what What do we expect? Yeah. Well, these are these are genocidal criminals and, and war criminals, to be sure. The eighth goal is to suppress all scientific development, except for those deemed beneficial by the committee. In other words, it, hey, it's got to be. You, go ahead and work on this, um, work on these science uh, projects, if you will, but only if it's beneficial for the committee. Especially targeted is nuclear energy, energy for peaceful purposes, and it's interesting because nations that persisted in building nuclear power plants were to be brought down. Um, Think, and I know this is a really a, a touchy subject, hot button subject. But think Iran, Argentina, at Pakistan, even to, to a lesser extent, perhaps. But um, a lot of bad press. The um, well, and the reason for this too is to have these countries to compel these countries to rely on a single a consolidated uh, area source for their energy. Okay. Now, number nine, to cause by means of limited wars uh, in the advanced countries a reduction of the number of people called surplus to requirements. Okay. These are the useless eaters, if you will. And, and by means of starvation and disease pandemics in third world countries, the same the same thing. The goal here is depopulation. The goal here is the death of at least three billion people by 2050. Did you see the Pope or one of the uh, higher ranking bishops in the church said that the earth needed to be depopulated about five million people? Yeah, five billion. Five billion. Yeah. Well, it's interesting to note that the Committee of 300 tasked uh, Cyrus Vance to write a paper on the subject of how best to bring about genocide. The paper was produced, and Cyrus Vance presented it under the title Global 2000 Report. Now, I mentioned that earlier. Folks, it's it's online. It's available, Global 2000 Report. 
guess who approved that uh, that paper? Well, it was approved for action by former President Jimmy Carter and then Secretary of State Edwin Muskie. This is on behalf of the U.S. government. And under the terms of the Global 2000 Report, the population of the United States is to be reduced by 100 million by the year 2050. Now, these numbers, I'm, I'm sure, have and are changing or will change based on the current population levels. Tenth goal, to weaken the moral fiber of the nation. Now, this is so important because this is exactly what's taking place today. You know, based on the decline and fall of the West, it was called for uh, planned decadence with the stars leading the way in just destroying marriage and sex in the context, in the context of, of marriage, using profane language, drug-taking, um, the way that they present themselves physically through uh, immodest dress. I, I'm trying to think of another word for that, but... Um, you know, we're talking about these stars, celebrities. Many of these celebrities, and we'll take Madonna, for example, and Britney Spears. Many of these so-called stars of today, or those people in the movie business in Hollywood, or in the fashion industry, or even talk show hosts, consider, for example, Oprah, Dr. Phil. Consider uh, Rosie O'Donnell, Ellen DeGeneres, Tavistock Institute creations, folks, all of them. Whether they know it or not, it's something different. But how about also them being a product of Edward Bernays? who, I should mention, is the nephew of Sigmund Freud, whose statue is in front of the Tavistock Institute. Okay, so do you see where we're headed with this? Now, I've just gone through 10 of the 23 goals. I'll do one more here before the top of the hour break and then finish with them after the top of the hour. Um the Club of Rome, too, was involved in uh, involved in the post-industrial zero-growth policies. Industries in the United States, especially, because the United States is one of the largest, uh, one of the biggest uh, stumbling blocks, speed bumps, to really getting the New World Order in place, and still is. The industry here in the United States, think of back in the oh, 60s, 50s, 60s, and 70s when the steel industry was going to shipbuilding, machine tool manufacturing, and so on. Well, it was the intent to uh, destroy the industry, the industrial base in America, and make people who worked in these trades and professions no longer employable. Well, mission accomplished. And what were the vehicles? And we we said it before: NAFTA, GATT, WTO. Do you see how all of these things are working in tandem, like this well-oiled machine? Today, it's the TPP, as well as the other. I'll use the word treaties because that's what they are essentially, with economic components to them and trade components to them. But also, the young people, the impressionable people, our, our, our children, grandchildren, they're going to be encouraged and are being encouraged and being programmed through rock music, through drugs, pornography. And it's interesting, too, you've got to understand the Tavistock Institute created the sex, drugs, and rock and roll theme. Because by themselves, for example, sex, drugs, rock and roll, 
they each have an effect on our young young people but taken together each one becomes a force multiplier of the other the Tavistock Institute considered this to be a blueprint for control of the young people and we go back into the 60s with the with the British invasion of the Beatles what do we see sex drugs and rock and roll and it's interesting as well think back in the 60s and those old enough to remember the age of Aquarius moving into the age of Aquarius the name is associated a lot with new age uh, literature right and uh, ideal well this actually uh, Tavistock uh, directed Stanford Research to undertake the work under the direction of Professor Willis Harmon, a work that later became known as the Aquarian Conspiracy and the Age of Aquarius. Well, that's kind of a bookmark in time. And this is all the foundation. This is the important foundation. That were and also some of the same game plan, the blueprints, game playbooks, whatever you want to call them, that we're seeing today. So when you see the TPP and the TPA, and you say, "Man, none of this makes any sense." Wait a minute, why is Ted Cruz, this staunch conservative Republican presidential candidate, siding with Obama? I mean, how can this be? And you'll have people saying, well, he's brilliant because he's forcing this, he's forcing the, uh, he's limiting the powers of of Obama. It, well, is he really? You know, through the TPA, for example. Is he really? Is that what's really taking place? He's brilliant? Yeah, brilliant as the Supreme Court Justice Kennedy was in the Affordable Care Act. Oh, it's a tax. Yeah. Okay. Same, same playbook. Different topic. We're going to take a commercial break. We're going to come back on the other side with more news <coughs> and information, and we will be taking your phone calls. <coughs> this, uh, maybe not this hour, but uh, if you want to call in in the following hour, get on the phone now and call 661-244-9839 that's 661-244-9839 we'll be right back after these short messages stay with us monday edition of the hagman and hagman report i said i paused after saying june 15th because i just realized it's already the middle of june and in wow. the town we live in we have about five months of nice weather and when i say nice weather i mean no snow on the ground yeah yeah i was uh, gonna say you might want to we got about five weeks of nice weather and it's coming and going fast so uh i got some programming notes this week's going to be an awesome week tomorrow stan Deo at his regular time will be with us wednesday we have russ dizdar he will be joining us for the whole show on thursday we have a special treat a much anticipated uh, from John uh, from HH Connections is going to come on and do the exposing of uh, satanic agenda in Hollywood, which uh, I cannot wait to hear. No, I'm telling you, and this is from an insider's perspective, former insider. And um, oh, he, I mean, uh, in talking with him, he wanted to talk to us to make sure that some of the content he went over was not too much for the show, it was not too overwhelming, was not too. Um, that it was appropriate that he could cover some of the things because he said that some of the things he uncovered were so dark and just so horrific. Buckle up. So that's going to be an informative, fascinating show. And then Josh Peck, author, uh, Quantum Physics, and his don't have the title of his new book right in front of me, but he's going to come on. We're going to talk about CERN. We're going to talk about a few other things pertaining to CERN, uh, things that he's uncovered as of late in his research. So we have a, a full week. Indeed we do. And I'd urge everyone to go to HagmanandHagman.com and click on the uh, main story there with Coach Dave Dobmeyer, Salt and Light Brigade. Look at the video and uh, look at it with a critical eye in terms of um, the quality because this is 
truly the um, the field investigative research team equipment that you've provided each one of you who who've helped us in in yeah. what we're doing and i got to say all the camera equipment that we've used in our past doing investigative work um this camera is i mean obviously we did different types of uh, or had different needs of, for the camera sure. then but on it doesn't get any better i mean unless we were to buy an actual camera they use on the movie sets i think this is the next best thing it is uh just so awesome. The things we'll be able to do with this camera will be great. And we have a lot of plans. We talked a lot over the weekend about different ideas, things we can do uh, from making, you know, spot YouTube videos to documentaries, interviews, uh, a whole right. bunch of things. And, and that goes hand in hand with some other things that we, we're going to be rolling out here in the coming days and weeks. So just uh, stay tuned. And, um, you know, uh, tell others. I, I, you know, I think you'll be proud. We want you to be proud of us. We really do. And we want you to say, you know, job well done. Anyway, before the uh, break, we were talking about the goals of the Committee of 300, the Unseen Hand, and then we left off at the 11th uh, uh, goal, the Aquarian Conspiracy. And uh, uh, what, what kind of... Uh, Goal number 12 is to keep people everywhere from really deciding their own destiny. And they do this through the application of really trauma-based series of events, one crisis after another. These are orchestrated crises. Now, Jade Helm is going to play into this or is going to, is conditioning the American mentality. Now, it, it has a multitude of goals, Jade Helm does. But the one thing that it does, it will do, is condition the minds of the American people, the, the people that are not awake out there, to accept the presence of military all around them. That, hey, you know, it's a fait accompli. But hand in hand with these training programs, of course, are created orchestrated crises. It, it, but then, what do you do when there's a crisis? You manage the crisis. And what is taking place is this intentional confusion and demoralization of the population to the extent that you've got too many choices. or You've got so many choices, it, it almost creates this apathetic condition of the population on a massive scale. The United States has um, really, since 9-11, has undergone shell shock. There's uh, Right now, there's a, a great percentage of the population experience, ex- experiencing a, a general malaise where even the, um, even the most raunchy stuff that we see take place there's not even a, a whimper or a protest or a concern, it seems. Now, when there is blowback, you have FEMA. Just keep that in the back of your mind. 13. Goal 13. And this goes to something I said earlier, uh, to, in, to introduce cults. New cults and continue to boost those cults already functioning. Now, there's different types of cults, religious cults or religious-based cults. One of those cults, the CIA creation or a CIA-influenced cult, is Sabud, S-U-B-U-D. And I mentioned Sabud in the context of Barack Hussein Obama slash Barry Satoro and... Uh, Fuddy, Loretta Fuddy, who was the health director of Hawaii until her mysterious death. Members of Sabud, or at least Obama's mother, Loretta Fuddy, Governor Abercrombie of Hawaii, Sabud members. But on the other side of that, the music part 
of these cults, these this uh, these music music mafia. I'll just say. Remember, I spoke about the Beatles, the Beatles invasion back in the sixties. There was a big brouhaha last year over the fiftieth anniversary of the Beatles invasion. Well, the Beatles were really a Tavistock created rock group. And they, part and parcel to their creation, the followers, the fans of the Beatles, uh, there was this insinuation of interest in really, well, I don't know, uh, Eastern mysticism, perhaps, religious practices. Kabbalah now with Madonna, um, Shirley MacLaine, to me more. All of these celebrities and all of these music groups are pushing a certain agenda or a certain mindset in influencing the younger generation, especially the younger generation. Kabbalah, oh, that's a big end thing to, to, to be uh, practicing, Madonna. Yeah, and, and if you look at, at, at the, this Kabbalah, uh, the groups all over America growing and, and nowhere more prolifically than in Hollywood, which leads us to our Thursday program, which will deal with Hollywood. But the Beatles, especially the Beatles, Tavistock, um, Boy, and, and, and think back to it that very same decade of, uh, when the Beatles came to, to uh, in, into into American culture. Rosemary's Baby in the cinema. John Lennon, Lennon, the Dakota Building, where he lived. Paul McGuire talks about this, writes about this, and the influence over the Beatles. Aleister Crowley influenced the Beatles. Charles Manson, a wannabe Beatle at one point, and the connection to the Beach Boys and, and Charles Manson. That, that whole Manson family cult. Goal number 14, to continue to build up the Christian fundamentalism. The Christian fundamentalism that we see in America, the uh, a lot of the uh, more liberal fundamentalism, if that even makes sense to you, and I know it probably does to some, really started back with the British East India Company's sole servant, if you will, John Nelson Darby. Now, you've got to think back... Um, on this one, you've got to think back about John Darby. Um, he arrived here in the United States. He was supposedly this very destitute preacher. How was he able to travel extensively all across the country? What about his European connections? Um, there's a lot of a lot of mystery here. With Darby. Hmm. Anyway, there's also a lot of overlap with the with the uh, committee of three hundred as well. The intention of the Christian fundamentalist movement, the counterfeit, if you will, Christian fundamentalist movement. It was to be a channel for. Well, strengthening the... Now, I want to be careful when I say this, because I, this is not meant to be an indictment against Jews or, or Israel, God's land. This is not an indictment against that, but but for the political Zionism, okay? Just, you've got to understand the difference. Man, there's so much... Uh, there's just absolutely so much uh, uh, knee-jerk reactions when people hear that, they automatically think of an indictment against the Jews or you're being anti-Semitic. Wait a second, there's a huge difference between a 
political Zionist type of 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 uh, uh, agenda than there is the Israel Jews of the Bible. Okay, you can say, well, and I've heard people say this. I may, well, the, refer to the media as being owned by the Jews and the banks being owned by the Jews. Now, hold on a minute. That's no, 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 no. Okay. Well, when you go back to Revelation, you know, it talks about there are people who say they're Jews and who are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. There's a lot of people that hide behind that label and do nefarious things in order to give people right. who are Jewish a bad name. Right, it, because we, full, we make no mistake about it, the Hagman and Hagman Report stands fully behind the nation of Israel, God's nation of Israel, and God's Jewish people, okay? Understand that. The, just like there are counterfeit Christians, there are counterfeit Jews. There are counterfeit everybody. I mean, so understand the difference. And I, I'm not going to tolerate any, any anti, anti-Semitic uh, type rants at all or anti-Jewish bias. God's nation of Israel, that is. And, no, but we certainly can can break down, you know, right. who's who, uh, you know, where they come from and who they are compared to who they say they are. But but, but see, a lot, most people just parrot uh, what they hear, you know, and, right. and are and intellectually do, bankrupt a, a when they talk about A thin level of this. research, and you find out that... Uh, in theory, it's true, except for the research is not done in enough to actually understand it. You know, they don't look at the um, look at it from all angles and understand the uh, manipulation throughout history that has occurred. You know, Satan uh, roars about. What does it say? Satan is like a roaring lion running around seeking who he may devour. That is with lies. That is with deception. That is. You know, to mislead you, um, there are forces that are trying to every day knock believers and even people, potential believers, um, off the important uh, truths that are out there that need to be understood. As the scriptures also say, do not be ignorant of Satan's devices. Correct. Do not do not be ignorant of Satan's. Devices. It doesn't mean we have to focus on them constantly and or uh, obsess with them, but we need to understand the nature of the enemy. And right, it, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, man. I, I got a problem. Okay, yeah. Uh, so be aware of what's out there. Now, uh, number fifteen is to engender the proliferation of religious cults, and that includes Islam, the Muslim Brotherhood. You could take it also to include the Sikhs. What what you see when this happens, you 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 see the uptick in suicide bombers or homicide bombers. You see things like Jim Jones, the uh, cult of Jim Jones, and and that uh, people you've got to understand where that originates, where these originates, and these are mind control experiments. Now, I know this sounds really crazy, but if you if you understand the effectiveness of the Tavistock Institute, the Committee of 300, with the manipulative control, the mind control, trauma-based mind uh, control and experimentation, then, then you'll see the bigger picture of this. You've got to see the bigger picture because the individual events and things by themselves will not do the trick for you. You've got to take a step back and see the bigger picture. Sixteen, to re, to uh, export religious liberation ideas around the world. What they're trying to do is undermine all of the monotheistic religions, all three of them. Uh, they're actually going to outlaw under this New World Order the three monotheistic religions, that's Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Now, I know that's hard to believe, but it's going to be an amalgamation of all three. 
This began with the Jesuit liberation theology, and folks, you can research that on your own, Jesuit uh, liberation theology. And if you want to see it in action, the Jesuit liberation theology, look at Nicaragua. The Somoza family rule in Nicaragua. Look at El Salvador, which... um, in 25 years of civil war there, Costa Rica, Honduras, a revolutionary activity there instigated by the Jesuits. If you go back and follow it to its ultimate origin, okay, Peru to, to a lesser extent, Chile, Venezuela, Argentina, Serbia even to to some extent. You've got to look at this, again, through a macro lens and not uh, through a microscope. Always remember these crises are orchestrated. These events are orchestrated. 17, to cause a total collapse of the world's economies and engineer total political chaos. Of course. 18, I mean, no commentary necessary in that. 18, to take control of foreign and domestic policies of the United States. Now, what is happening with the TPP? What has happened with NAFTA and GATT and WTO? What's happening with the TPA? It's been defeated. Yes. Oh, until tomorrow when the TPA will be a part of a, 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 a will be rolled into a new package that will be voted on and backdoored into law. Yes, it will, without a doubt. Now, 19, to give the fullest support uh, to supranational institutions, you've got to take a look at the creation of the United Nations, the IMF, the Bank of International Settlements, the World Court, they will overtake, replace the national uh, counterparts. Enough said on that. 20. To prepare and subvert all governments and work from within them to destroy the sovereign integrity of nations represented by them under the guise of spreading democracy. And this is further under the further guise of combating terrorism. Mm-hmm. Isn't it always? Yeah, absolutely, it's it's always been that way. Just in different uh, different players, different colored uniforms or uniforms. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uniforms. Number twenty one to organize a world terrorist apparatus and to negotiate with lawful government for their surrender whenever terrorist activities take place by allowing the U.S. to establish permanent military bases in those nations, which will be carried out under the banner of bringing democracy. Aren't we seeing that in all? How many bases are, how many, where's our, I mean, we got how much, where's our military? How many countries? A lot. Most of them, right? Absolutely. Under the, under the uh, pretext of spreading democracy, when in fact it's, uh, no, it's not doing that. We're not doing that. We're actually, the foot soldiers for the power behind the veil, the Committee of 300, and the various offshoots, the NGOs that I mentioned, the various think tanks and various organizations. 22, and and this is important, extremely important, to take control of education in America with the intent and purpose to utterly and completely destroy it through incremental change in curriculum, and by teaching methods, think Common Core, outcome-based education as well. You know, <laughs> also revise the revise history. Limit one's the children's knowledge of the Constitution, of uh, the Constitution, of how America was formed. Oh, my goodness. Controlled education. It does not allow for 
the exposure to these conspiracies which which exist you know it's like everything just the, the wars the wars that we've seen we never question the origins of the first or second world war the bolshevik revolution the rise of communism the creation of isis these are all spontaneous events we're told right eh? we're hey. told yeah, we're taught. No, it just happened. No, these are all orchestrated, very carefully planned events. And, and you know what? You mentioned you mentioned that, and and the the people in power. I can imagine. I just I, I don't know why I've got this. I can imagine sitting in a in a room with Brit Hume. Picture this in your mind now. You know, Brit Brit Hume. Right, the, the the father of media taking the place of uh, the father of conservative media anyway, taking the place of whoever I don't know, and, and just talking about this. Oh, you're you're a crackpot. You're nuts. <laughs> and, and of course, many would be intimidated by that because that's the intent is to intimidate you, to vilify, nullify you, deride you deride others into thinking you, we, are crackpots. We're nuts. Well, job well done so far, right? But controlled education is doing this, where you're being taught, your children, I should say your children are being taught to think just that way. Revise, in fact, the entire education about things like treaties. So you've got, when you're an adult, and you can see this on various message boards, political message boards, people people have no clue, for example, how treaties, how the United States, the the Congress, and how they're voted on and how they're created. I mean, the confusion and ignorance is rampant. Do you think that's purely accidental? Do you think that's because, well, all the teachers... In, in, across the country, they're incompetent because they're they're underpaid. Well, certainly that's part of it, but no, no, it's by design. Teachers who try to make a difference in ways that are frowned upon, we see being fired, laid off, transferred. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, again, education is a big part of you know changing the education is a big part of this and. If you it, it, just take a look, for example, at the quality of the tests back in the 1800s, the, you know, the eighth grade tests or elementary school tests, and, and give that to a college freshman. Yeah, see what will happen there. How well will they do? The last goal, number 23, and then we can move on, is to establish socialism in the United States for the purpose of nullifying state constitutions and federal, well, the federal constitution. The establishment of socialism as a political system. The Fabian socialists, the Fabian society, they were a product of the East India Company. We talked about the Fabian socialists. Well, where did they come from? Did they just develop out of thin air? No. Go back a little further. East India Company, the Fabian Socialist Society of London. If you identify it by their leader or by its leaders, Beatrice and Sidney Webb, and others, including Bertrand Russell and H.G. Wells, more better known people, well, they owed their positions to the British East India Company. And they became and were Fabian socialists or members of the Fabian Society, which was a product of the East India Company. And you you know, you can get into um you can get into the incestuous nature, but follow it all the way back. And and we can even follow it go by going back into biblical times because all of this is a luciferian agenda and all of this is luciferian one last thing i want to mention and and uh, uh you know the tavistock institute 
Yeah, no, I think you've only mentioned it about twenty times this show. Well, one more thing. You know, think think of the um think of the uh influence. What was that? Harry Potter? Harry Potter. Harry Potter books. Didn't they have an influence on young people? Yes. Magic and stuff. And children's witchcraft. Yep. You know, it, it seemed to like just kind of develop and take hold, folks. That was a creation. That was actually that was actually uh, polished by the Tavistock Institute. The, yeah, the, the, the yeah. level of uh, influence that these people have is far more. Uh, I, I could not believe it, listening and reading some of the things that you had come across the reach and uh, as I said influence that they have on the what seemingly would be you know uh, unimportant things but I mean it it's so it is controlled so much more than we think oh it, it certainly detail, is detail you know how why when all of that things that you know for reasons we wouldn't even begin to explain right now um it's just uh, tightly controlled. It is uh, nothing is by accident. Nothing happens by accident, and that's right. Uh, we see the results of their meticulous planning. And I would like to mention that much of this information, this background invest- investigation, is the investigative product. And I mentioned this before of Dr. John Coleman. And if you can get a chance to grab a copy of his book, The Conspirators Hierarchy, The Committee of 300, it would really do you well to give you the background into this. And that goes hand in hand with Paul McGuire's writings, as I mentioned. And to tell you a little bit more, and I'll close with this, a few weeks back or a few months back, and I think Larry from... Western New York, when he was here in studio last week, he he asked us, I don't know if it was on air or off air, and folks, maybe many of you heard this because, oh, it went viral around the internet. Yeah? Yes, the dress, the, is, oh, it, is yeah. it blue and black or white and blue or blue and gold or white and blue? The issue of the dress. Do you remember that, folks? Yeah, I recently watched a, a show on Netflix having to do with perception and how things can seem to look or appear one way and uh, how our eyes work and how they actually are something different. And it was very uh, educational. Well, it, it, when Larry was here and, and he mentioned, I, we we were in... Uh, Orlando when when that appeared I, when it apparently went viral and everyone was talking about you know what color is the dress and, and no one can agree on it how can one thing one picture you know, how can one person see one one picture one color and another person see another color and folks if if you're not if you don't know what I'm talking about just search uh, uh, dress blue dress or blue gold dress white blue gold dress or whatever. I'm sure there will be some uh, or dress co- um, color dress controversy or whatever. I, I don't know. But it will come up. You can search for it if you're not familiar with it. If you are familiar with it, uh, great. And, and everyone was apparently talking about it back in uh, early March, late April, or late uh, February. Well, this... Uh, when Larry mentioned it to me, that was the first time I heard about it. And you know, I'm, I consider myself pretty well up on things. I didn't hear about this before. And, and the more research done on this, where does it trace back to? It traces back to the Tavistock Institute, of course. And this is a method to make you believe that nothing is as it seems. To make you not trust your own perception. It goes very deep to make you um, unsure of yourself. 
true, very finely tuned um, manipulation of images. You know, uh, think of, uh, uh, I'm just trying to think of like crystals or whatever that can, uh, given the right light, cast a certain color. Well, that's how this, essentially that's how this was done where people would see one set of colors on, on the same dress and another group would see another set of colors the same dress, just different images. Well, it's the slight alteration of the perspective of the dress that causes that. But it's it's done to make you be off balance, not sure what your eyes are seeing, and to make you question absolutes. Can you absolutely say it's blue and black or blue and white or whatever the colors might be? Can you absolutely say that? Well, I guess I can't. So then you can't absolutely say that, and I'm taking a leap here, but follow me on this. You can't absolutely say that ISIS... uh, you can't really be sure of anything you see with ISIS, the beheadings. You can't. No. Uh, I guess that was a bad example. Or you can't absolutely be sure about, uh, well, insert an absolute where I just left off. You have to, it's being done so you question your own perception. That's the big thing to destabilize you mentally and psychologically. It's an evil agenda, but very effective. And and most of the people fall for it. Yeah, you have to be uh, really grounded. You have to be uh, in prayer, close to the Lord. You have to have your eyes open. And it's not a... I mean, spiritually open, because there is a barrier that we can't cross for whatever reason. An example is, uh, you know, I mean, we've all been through it before we come, become quote unquote awake. And the only way that we can have this barrier removed is through the help of the Lord showing us. And we have to be there to listen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, it can be. I mean, we can we can put ourselves through so much deception, believing this, the deception, um, adapting it as a belief system. <laughs> you know, most people go through life if they don't, if they either don't care about the important issues, or they do care and have been deceived into believing something's a certain way. When we were in school, when I was young, we were always taught the question. Uh, ask questions, you know. The teacher has always wanted people to ask questions uh, because, you know, you learn through uh, this process. And when you present something to you and you don't understand it, well, you ask a question. In today's society, asking questions is equal to, uh, you know, extremism. Uh, That's right. You know, like 9-11 is a great, perfect example. It went from, you know, you know, be bold, ask questions. To, to asking questions makes you uh, some kind of lunatic. And the adults who I mean, adults, the people who are old, the generation before me. I'm 32, uh, so your generation, Dad. <laughs> a lot of them pay attention to politics, who have opinions of the way the world works. Uh, were raised to ask questions seem to have, you know, died down either their interests or I mean there, if we had a informed smart population, right? Would we see I mean, what well, how can they get away with it? The lying, the marginalizing people who want the truth. The truth is a precious commodity these days. You don't find it um on your everyday walks of life seeking information. You have to put it together yourself. You you've got you, right, and then you better double check to make yeah. sure. Yeah. 
if the don't take our word for it for example uh, verify trust but verify it, you know and i'm sure you know these newspapers and media outlets didn't start by telling all lies otherwise they never would have made it you know uh, as long as they have they started by gaining people's trust by reporting facts and then uh as the plan unfolded and the media is owned by the people uh, behind this evil agenda. They weaned away from the truth and s- pushed the envelope to see how much and how far they could go. And you see today, <laughs> I mean, my goodness, it is uh, to those who are understanding and are aware and have their eyes open to see what they put out today as truth when it would take five seconds for the most of what they claim is fact to disprove on your own research, you know, five, ten seconds. I mean, it's it's almost sloppy, but it can't be. They, it's purposeful. I, I don't know why, but, you know, they do it. And even the people like Glenn Beck, it's still just as bad when you put out 90% truth and 10% mis, you know, lies. You know, is it unwittingly, or is it is it with an agenda? I mean, people think Fox, I mean, people like Fox News, especially because everything's so liberal and um, you know progressive. Fox News is claims not to be, or at least broadcast from a perspective that that's not the way they operate. Well, they're just they're more dangerous than the, with the progressive media. They are not hiding the fact that they're progressive, that they're you know want these uh, socialist policies and. Uh, you know, governmental police state. The danger is with Fox News pretending that they're conservative, pretending that they're God-fearing people, and then coming across and pushing the progressive and socialist agenda through. Hmm. Very well said. And like they say, you know, beware of wolves and sheep's clothing. Uh, the progressives don't put the sheep clothing on. They, they're wolves, and they uh, don't hide that fact. And that's, you know, somebody had sent me an email saying, um, you know, why are, like, why is Paul McGuire really, you know, really uh, slamming uh, 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 Republicans or so-called conservatives? In in fact, you know, Newt Gingrich, for example, because, okay, look, we expect, you you see a wolf, you you, you sense danger. You know, I mean, there's an overt, obvious peril right there. But when you see a lamb walking up to you, or or a friendly dog, for example, or seemingly friendly yeah. dog, you know, or like a poodle. A great know. example in history is the uh, Troy, the uh, what was that horse they made? The, the Trojan horse. Right, the Trojan horse. I'm sorry. The um, I forget the countries involved. There's a, a, a huge uh, battle going on for years. They were trying to penetrate the walls of this civilization. They, there was the Greeks, I believe, were fighting, and after you know a decade of fighting, they uh, pulled back and presented a horse, right, big, an, an a offering, horse, right, yeah. and the peace offering, if you will. They brought the horse into their walls, and uh, inside the horse were a brigade of, of we'll say, special ops. Uh, who, when everyone was asleep, came out of the horse and opened the doors for the Greeks to come in and take over. The Trojan horse is the most dangerous because you never see it coming. Right, which answers the question, why are you so hard on people like uh, you know Newt Gingrich and, and others? Is because, well, because they're masquerading. They were, yeah, you know, we're so hard on them because they are the two-faced ones. I would rather have, you know, uh, Al Sharpton, uh, you know, these, those people uh, don't hide what they're thinking, what their agendas are. The Lawrence O'Donnells, yes, we're a socialist country. Um, it, it's the people like uh, Brett Baer and the Shepard Smiths and the Glenn Becks who say that we're f- for liberty and freedom, except in reality they're part of the agenda. I mean, right? these but people... He, 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 no, he, it's, it's, it's in some cases, okay, without painting with a using a broad brush here, in some cases, you know, they're just intellectually deficient, 
Sorry, but th- that's, that's like, my view. I don't and think they're so. just dupes. That's like okay? saying the president is incompetent. Well, no, 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 no. Okay, now I'm going to. Uh, most of you know most journalists are CIA operatives. <laughs> well, of course. Most but, famously, but, uh, uh, Anderson Cooper. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I, look, I get that, but what I'm saying is, you have some really. Uh, you obviously you've got some very very. Uh, tactical operatives in the news media, but then you've got some really ignorant people, okay, some really intellectually deficient people, hollow, blonde bimbos, eye candy, nothing more. Well, that's exactly, just okay. said, that's what they're there for, yeah. Right, okay. Um, that, you know, every once in a while, when they go off the teleprompter, will say something really stupid, okay, oh, and, and show how stupid they are. I got a good example. Uh, but, but again, that. but okay, I just want to say that that's not. Uh, I mean, there are exceptions to that uh, tactical operative rule. There. Okay, go ahead. The um, I wouldn't. Know, I don't know if this person. You said, what did you say? Eye candy. I don't know who this or what this person looks like. Or Frederica, if they're um, well known or not, new or not. Well, there's a CNN anchor. Frederica. Yeah. Frederica. CNN yeah. anchor Frederica Whitfield. Yeah. Went on uh, on our sh- on TV she on CNN. I saw that. And interview. This is during a discussion on the Dallas Police Headquarters shooting. CNN anchor Frederica had appeared to misspoke, calling. Uh, this is what she said pertaining to the Dallas Police Headquarters shooting. It was a very courageous and brave, if not crazy, uh, attack, attack or attack. something. Yeah, yes. yeah. You, you know, I I, I watched that in. in it, to me, that was like a. a I understand what. It, maybe she used the wrong word. Not brave, brazen. Uh, it just very, seemed like she just went off the teleprompter. Well, you know. Yeah, but my question is: Does she? You know, we see this police brutality in the news more often, uh, day by day. The uh, unnecessary deaths of of people and the police officers being, uh, you know. Let go with pay temporarily reinstated. I just saw recently the police officer in Cleveland who shot the 12 year old boy will be facing charges, I believe, uh, if I read that report right. And uh, but it, it's just mind boggling to to see. I mean, you have the blind leading the blind. This is why we say it's so important to stay away from the TV, to stay away from the uh, you know entertainment out there because it is all designed to ensnare you back into a lie, into a political correct way of thinking. They are so afraid and uh, are so hell-bent on making not only their agenda become reality, which they do that through legislation, they do that through enforcement, but they not only want to force it on you, they want you, they want to uh, brainwash you so you accept it. I mean, because they can come in with their, you know, boot and, and uh, declare martial law and force us into any situation anytime they want. It's the making you want it is is what the the game is here. Right, and to soften us up to to want to be slaves. You're exactly correct. It's a lot easier to get, uh, you know, a couple of hundred million people to. Uh, submit to tyranny than it is to, to um, you know, force them into that, and and that's what what they're doing with us right now. And, and the other thing that you had mentioned, and I just want to point this out because I've gotten so many emails from people who who are saying, uh, look at all, the, look at the, this whistleblower here uh, talking about uh, what's going to happen on June fifteenth, and it's in Texas with. With uh, this particular uh, uh, plan, uh, to uh, part of Jade Helm. Okay, uh, folks. Uh, some of these people, and, and you've got to realize this. Some of these people are planted. Uh, okay, let me back up. You've got some people who just are out, out and out kooks. Okay, let's put them aside. Then you've got others who are planted to deliberately create uh, 
um, to, to make up, make us, you and I, the watchmen look in or uncredible, incredible. Foolish. Have no credibility, right? And then you've got information being put out there about Jade Helm and the other things that is deliberately put out there by organizations such, well, that can be traced back to the Tavistock Institute, that they watch. For example, when there's a leak or would it, would, if, um, uh, if they want to trace a, Sewer pipes, for example, they can dump like a dye into this, a, a pipe and you know see where it comes out. And okay, uh, that's what a lot of this is: is me- uh, psychological experimentation and psychological conditioning. Because soon they, they want to, uh, they just want to throw so much at us that the apathy overtakes us, the malaise overtakes us, and we grow tired. Oh, my goodness, not another Jade Helm conspiracy um, claim. Just not another one. Please, are you serious? Meanwhile, there's a lot of things happening behind the scene, covered and, and distracted by the... Uh, non-credible conspir- or, or non-truthful conspiracy claims. Now, I, I'm not. I'm not saying that uh, that Jade Helm is is not um, nefarious in its intent. For, that's the furthest thing. For, uh, you know, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that there are uh, there are people out there who have been paid to uh, to assail the credibility of certain people in the alternative media and you've got to be doggone careful what you know what you say and, and what you claim to know. Now it's one thing to say, look, this is some information I got. You decide in terms of the credibility of the information, the validity of it. Here's who I got it from, if you can possibly name the source or point to the source. Um but but you know Pretty soon, there's this fatigue that will overtake, and, and it's already happening. Fatigue is overtaking a lot of people right now, especially the people who are paying, people who listen to this broadcast, getting tired of hearing the, the warning bells go off and off and off and off. Now, does okay, you know what, what's what's the end game here? The end game is is to totally subjugate every American uh, under this tyrannical system of global government government. That that objective hasn't changed, but just don't be marginalized by the people who want to take you down through disinformation, deliberate disinformation. I hope that made sense. And, and this is not directed at any one any any one particular person or people or group of people, except those who are propagating, uh, deliberately propagating disinformation for the purposes of. Distracting the watchman. I guess, like I said, I hope I made sense on that. Mm-hmm. But uh, so be very careful. You know, we will see the death of the dollar or the orchestrated killing of the U.S. dollar. We will see the subjugation of the American populace. We will see all of this take place. Absolutely, we will. Yeah. And uh, we're up against the top of the hour already. It's wow. Just flying by. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back with news and your phone calls on the other side. You're listening to the Hagman and Hagman Report on this Monday, June 15, 2015. Just back from Washington, D.C., from the solemn assembly in front of the Supreme Court. The news is today that they uh, seem to be close to a decision, uh, a change apparently from yesterday or from last week. This will be coming up sooner than we thought. Stay with us. Hey folks, Father's Day is coming up, and uh, can I recommend for the wives out there or the children, probably, go to AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com, AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com. Dad would feel good about a gift from American Survival Wholesale. You know, 
absent of or beyond the uh, American or beyond the Father's Day aspect of things. We all need to be prepared. We just went through the goals of the people in power, the people behind the veil. Well, let me tell you something. The goals, the objectives, are they're coming at us like a freight train, and especially the economic side of things. The, the economy is not going to get better. We can see that it's all a magic smoke and mirrors show. It's all really, well, it's, it's, it's all magic the economy the numbers are not right we need we need to be prepared we need to be prepared for supply disruptions for food costs that are going to go through the roof and any number of things natural disasters as well the prudent prepare the fools don't go to american survival wholesale.com that's american survival wholesale.com they've got plenty of items there long term storable food the rolls royce of food brands, storable, long-term storable food brands, the Thrive products, lower than you can even buy them on the uh, vendors' websites, the company's websites. They've got the Thrive Express, the pantry packs, good for five-year shelf life. My goodness, really good. And you know what? The the, the best part is uh, they taste great. So you can eat them normally. You don't have to worry about the uh, uh, eating sawdust and cardboard like some of the, well, MREs and things like that. No, no, th- this is good food. Uh, also, the heirloom seeds they've got, uh, an acre, cover an acre of ground for 50 bucks. You can't beat that. All of this at AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com. Plus, for those with more month than money, the pay as pack. And uh, McGuire's Revolution. That is really great. You get a, a, ma- a copy of Mass Awakening with your order. They've got so much. Visit AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com. That's AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com, and uh, go to town. Prepare now. The prudent prepare. The foolish. Well, good luck with that. And, and while I'm talking about uh, our partners, and, and American Survival Wholesale is our partner. And, so is Healthmasters, healthmasters.com. Dr. Ted Brewer and his wife and family, what a great business they've put together. Folks, go to healthmasters.com. We need to have that spiritual nourishment, but we also need to be physically ready for what is about to come. There may be a day, and I don't know, there may be a day when you won't be able to get your metformin, or uh, maybe, wouldn't it be great if you didn't need it? Well, the healthmasters.com, the Hagman blood sugar protocol, let me tell you something. I never had a problem fighting low blood sugar. Well, what healthmasters.com with their blood sugar protocol uh, really, really kicked, it really changed uh, things with me personally. And Breakthrough Health, what a great book to have. Healthmasters.com, healthmasters.com. Bookmark that site. Sign up for their free newsletter as well. You want uh, products from them? Let me tell you. Their vitamins, minerals, nutraceutical supplements. Best there is, bar none. Best there is. And you can tell by taking them. That's healthmasters.com. Honest to goodness, Toffee is a fantastic uh, company that makes the most mouth-watering toffee there is. And Honest to Goodness Toffee is running a special for Father's Day. It is a huge slab of toffee at the uh, at a regular price. I don't have the uh, uh, details in front of me, but go to honesttogoodnesstoffee.com. They're running this special. Orders have to be in by Tuesday. For Father's Day? For Father's Day, yes. We have received nothing but... Uh, <coughs> Uh, praise on the taste of the toffee. And, oh yeah, you know people absolutely gourmet. love it. Gourmet toffee, toffee, organic, cooked with all organic uh, ingredients. It is one of a kind, and I know I like it. I know my wife loves it. Uh, you guys have no idea how much toffee she ate. 
in uh, a few months span. Uh, the it, it really makes sense. Day yeah. hard coffee that you still have uh, or had. Uh, she ate that in like three days. Um, she also was going through some some stomach things and she wasn't doing well. But that was one thing that she could eat. And uh, you know, she asks about the toffee all the time. You, you think you know toffee? You don't know toffee until you had honest to goodness toffee dot com. Let me tell you, honest to goodness toffee for herb. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you just it's just fabulous. I mean, mouth watering. I've never been a toffee mouth. person. Neither neither was I. But man, uh, the, from the first day, I I grabbed a bite. <sighs> And, and you know something, and I'm very serious about this, whether it's American Survival Wholesale or Health Masters or Honest to Goodness Toffee or whatever the product might be, let me tell you, we don't endorse or we don't accept any type of, uh, we, yeah, don't, we, you know, we don't endorse uh, advertised anything. products no. unless we... Uh, Do you realize how many, uh, we, you just don't know how many different uh, companies that we said no to whether it's books or products or whatever. Absolutely not. No, no, no. A lot. So go to honestogoodness.com, and if you order, uh, let them know that you heard it on the Hagman and Hagman Report. That is honesttogoodness.toffee.com. And we're not kidding. Honest to goodness. We're going to be taking your phone calls this hour. But first, um, my father wants to address yeah. the emails. Or? Yeah, I, I, I do. And I want to thank Ted. Uh, thank you so much for uh, your email. He writes, it was great. It was a great testimony to see both via the video feed after the fact. In D.C., despite the sweltering, sweltering weather, in wearing dark clothing to boot. Yes, you know, we didn't plan right for that. Um, what were we thinking? We we wore our Hagman Hagman shirts. I know I had um, a nice white dress. I had nice white dress shirts I bought too. Well, yeah. I mean, we just we we didn't plan for didn't plan well for the clothing aspect of it. Except the, you know, that seriously. Whenever I'm on camera, it's my rule: shirt and tie, suit, you know, that kind of thing. And um, I couldn't do. I couldn't bring myself to do it Sunday. And uh, I, the fallback I had was a black and I asked Joe to change into his black shirt and anyway um, Ted's brother Richard was the uh, he was a guy that was uh, dressed like uh, yeah like you, he, he should have been I'm telling you it was great met him in, uh, in D.C. and uh, uh, anyway uh, so uh, Douglas C thank you so much for your email I saw Doug. one in there about the uh uh, you saw it too, I'm sure. Um, yeah, which one? About the umbrella. Oh, yeah. But then, I mean, I we appreciate the feedback, but there was no, from what I saw, absolutely no change in uh, yeah. picture due to that. Well, you, you know, it's it's interesting because I, I have another email here. Um, and that was actually very nice, I thought, because... Uh, oh, man. <laughs> well, the... Uh, you know, it's interesting because I get an email here from uh, Kevin R. I'm, you know, thank you very much. Uh, goodbye. You know, have a great life. Uh, because uh, Kevin believes that uh, uh, that the college radio show does a better job than we do, and there's a lot of mic Which noise. Which college radio show? Uh, it doesn't matter. But the, there's a lot of mic noise. Now we we did correct. Uh, it, it took steps to correct a, uh, a loose mic cable. We're doing the best we can. Okay, I mean, you know, we just we just sunk a whole boatload of money into a studio, and and yeah, the the mic noise. I I, I get it. I understand it. I can hear it. It frustrates me too. All I right. I haven't heard the clicking. Uh, I don't know what exactly if that's what's being referred to, but. Um, Sometimes it's me moving around. Sometimes, you know, I have to take the headset off to grab right. something. To, I mean, so. <laughs> now, now, you know, we're doing our best, okay? So we appreciate those of you who are hanging in there and, you know, but but to say, hey, you know, uh, stick it in your behind, basically, and uh, good riddance. Well, hey. Well, the first part was uncalled for, but, uh, you know, good luck. Well, I, I mean, that's the. So anyway, um, and I just want to say hello as well uh, to M. M. 
interested in listening to Walid Shubat and um, he, he writes check Mark Clements and well Walid Shubat's been on our program before his yeah. son Ted I've interviewed him when I sat in for Lori Roth on the Roth show uh, he'll be back he is uh, he is uh, so much information and a unique insight and perspective on on uh, scripture and, and current events that is definitely necessary uh to consider, I mean, I would urge people to, if never heard of him before, to uh, check out his point of view. I'm sure you can find videos on, on YouTube or uh, articles he's written. Um, it's, it's something to consider uh, his, his views, especially on prophecy. Right, makes me think. And uh, one last thing, a, a little bit of housekeeping here. Okay, we are um, working on the website. There will be good things coming here. You know, we just uh, like. Not an excuse, okay? It's just been moving the studio, physical move. Uh, both Joe and I actually phys- physically moved our households as well. Yeah. You know, so, you know and and it's you go traveling to D.C. to to make a statement, pray, be part of the, uh, and be very honored to be very honored to be part of the Salt and Light Brigade's uh, initiative of prayer and at the Solemn Assembly. I mean, please give, give us a break. Stuff, uh, between you and me, half the day's on the phone, uh, or you know, corresponding with people for whatever reason. Yeah, so uh, we're doing our best, and um, you know, we're 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 just we're we're just doing our best. And Karen, God bless you, because Karen, thank you. There's always room for improvement, but yeah, you I know. Mean. And Bob and Maggie, God bless you as well. So, all right, I just wanted to hit those, and and again, thank you for for your. Just for being part of our family, and you know, somebody came up to me yesterday. It was yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, in in Washington, uh, and it was just a lovely, lovely lady. And she came up and she said, "You know, I want to thank you for talking to the people who are alone. I'm alone." And I just thought, "Wow, man, you know." Um. Uh, wow. Even those who have spouses and families, many of those people still feel alone. Uh, yeah, of course. So, uh, you know. Well, you know, I, I didn't, I can't remember, ma'am, if you're listening, I can't remember your first name. Uh, and I'm so sorry. I could picture you, I, I mean, I could pick you out of, of, of a lineup yeah, I know right who now. you're talking about, yeah. I can't and, and, uh, and, and, you know, it, it, that when, when she said it, I, I think I was... You know, half dead with heat, but um, you know we're not going to get what we're not going to get through what's coming alone, and I, I don't care, I don't care who you are. We're going to have to rely on others, and even if you're talking in a tactical situation, you're you can only stay awake for so long. You can only guard your stuff for so long. You can only mentally survive for so long. Right. And, and, you know, a lot of people uh, get frustrated because their neighbors, their family, their friends aren't seeing things the way that they really are. And, uh, you know, we tend to isolate more away from those who don't share our concern about the times that we live in. But one thing we need to do and understand is that when these terrible things, uh, life-changing worldly events happen, you know, those people will will have to, they'll, their worldview is going to change. Um, so take put that aside, you know, the uh, opinions and uh, facts about what's going on in, in our world. And, you know, whether it's your neighbors, whether it's family members, just, uh, you know, keep them, keep a good relationship between them because, you ever you're going to need each other. We're going to need each other. Yeah, we are. And g- give those people a break a little bit. Yeah. Boy, I even sometimes uh, did I just say that? Yeah. yeah. I, I I guess we have to I mean, they don't have to agree, you know, you know, about the times we're in and about <laughs> what's going on, but uh well, we forget where we were too. It will be a time when it doesn't matter. Because it'll be right in your face. That's right. 
Yeah, exactly. And you're not. Nobody's going to be happy and and just wanting to say something like, "Oh, see, I told you so." I mean, people are going to be not sure what's going on. They're going to be confused. It's we need to be there for each other, regardless of uh, anything else. You know, minus uh, the person being some kind of you know evil, horrible person. But we have to put petty differences aside. We need to be a community, and that includes believers and even non-believers, if that's what it takes. But we will fall if we're, you know, all alone. Together, we must stand, and we we can go from there. Right. Uh, we need to take care of each other. We need to be a, a society. Well, we have to lift one another up, and, and you know. A lot of people are going to be affected by what's coming, and everyone's going to be. I'm sure. I'm sorry. Everyone's going to be affected by what's coming, but a lot of people are going to uh, feel the effects of it uh, up close and personal. Lose everything. I mean everything. And we have to understand too. Right now, with there's two things. There's the uh, one part where we have, we lose patience with those who don't see what's coming, and. It's easy to do when you do a show five nights a week, three three hours a day. You do all this research, you see what's coming, and then you go out and talk to somebody who says you're you're crazy, you're an idiot, you know, you're a conspiracy kook, you're you're so full of it, and you know you make money off of this. Okay, right. No, you know that's that's not the case. If you knew the truth, if you knew the, the, the my uh, uh, rested out status symbol of a car in the driveway tells it all. Actually. That, no, yeah, no, that, that, that's, I mean, that's that. That was our vehicle. When we that thing has been to New York City more times than. Uh, in, in all honesty, uh, money, no money, nothing. It doesn't matter. It's yeah, about that's the right. Truth. Yeah, that's it's right. about helping go. people. It's about being there to inform other people. That's right. I, it, you know, if I if I had to, uh, you know, have two jobs, one pouring concrete and one doing roofing it, that, and just to do this show I would because it's not about anything else other than making a difference for uh, people out there preaching you know the good news of Jesus Christ and uh, helping people understand what is going on in the world uh, well, not that we have any special uh, insight we just have well that's, uh, the, that's coming we're developing a few things but well, you know what I mean yeah we're not we we have the insight that the Lord has blessed us with, and we share that with other people. That's right. And if people don't like it, they don't have to listen, but we hope if we can change one person's mind, if we can bring one person to the Lord, uh, then we've done what we're supposed to do. Yeah, exactly. And just remember where you know where you were mentally, maybe, I don't know, some... Some are quicker than others. So 99% of I remember where I was physically eight years ago. Uh, yeah. Well, 99% of the people out there are, are better than a heck of a lot quicker on the uptake than me. So, you know, it took me a long time to understand things. And, and so, uh, yeah, uh, please just understand that you got to give some people a little bit of time to mature into the truth. A lot of people, uh, and we're being programmed, we're programmed into when we hear something, immediately discount it because it just seems so incredible, literally incredible. And um, it doesn't fit within our, our mental paradigm, that uh, our mental uh, uh, way, you know, that it, no, it can't be possible. Boy, I, it, but the, the people who are alone, you're never alone. Look, until our until we're, the plug is pulled from us or we're, you know, somebody physically stuffs a sock in, our, in my mouth or duct tapes Joe's mouth shut or whatever, mm. we're going to be with you. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and... We're gonna, you know, need each other now more than ever. Things are changing. That's right. We're one event away from a uh, mind change or world changing set of circumstances where everything from the moment we were born till now will be uh, different after whatever event takes place, natural or otherwise. We have to understand that we are here for a reason. We are living in this time for a purpose. The Lord has ordained the beginning from the end. He is in control. The battle's been won. The only question is, is where we end up in the end. 
And that's what we're walking out now. Right. And th- thank you. Nothing for... else is important than, you know, we have to find our uh, our purpose that the Lord has for us, which could be uh, something as simple as praying. could be something as simple as, um, you know, I mean, who knows? There is no, uh, it doesn't matter. Doing the work of the Lord uh, has no, you know, higher title than the other. It's all the same. We're all in this boat together. You mentioned praying. All I, this I was, is important. I was so impressed, Joe, yesterday because of all the things that, of all the directions Coach Dave Dobb and Mark have taken, prayer. Yeah. I mean, what better weapon? What better course of action? Just to be fasting. a part of that. <laughs> no, yeah, prayer and fasting. Yeah, just, I mean, just be a part of that, though. Wow. And, and you know, um, what, one thing he said at the beginning of that uh, assembly there, he said that each one of you represents thousands. Mm-hmm. And that's true, because there were so many people. I've heard, I heard from so many people. Oh, yeah, I talked to many. That, well, that I can't be there, but, you know, we're doing it at, at home or at our church. In fact, uh, the church here where we live. Twelve to three had done it. Uh, had, had, had dedicated three hours to, to prayer. Jeannie from Honest to Goodness Toffee uh, said she wished she could be there, but she couldn't, and asked what it was she, we could that she could do uh, in place of being there. And I just told her, you know, pray, and and, and yeah. if you want, you can fast and pray during the times that we're going to be there. And I mean, we have no idea the difference that that makes. Uh, I wouldn't want to imagine life and situations and, and traveling and everything that we do and other people do without the, the prayers of people out there. And, and Steve Quayle was, was, was right as usual. You know, there's different types of prayer. There's intercession inter prayer and there's imprecatory prayer and when warranted or when called for. And, um, you, you know, it, it's really, that's what it's all about. But uh, each one of you that that uh, that we've met, you know, has has really made an indelible impression upon us, and um, maybe we are forgetful sometimes of your names, or it seems like you know we we uh, I, just understand it's, it. Each one of you are, are so important to us, and we just want to repay that uh, relate. You know, we want to be an active participant in the relationship by by being there for you as well. And uh, that, that's that's all. It, it, it didn't mean to go off on the tangent, but I just uh, going through the emails and thinking about yesterday. Really great to to just be with people that they get it, and those who don't, hey, they will either the the hard way or you know through maturity. Okay, so let's go to the phone. Let's do it. Area code five six one. Let's knock. Let's wait a minute, before we do this. Let's knock our microphones together. Oh, never mind. Five six one. We're coming to you. You're live on the Hagman and Hagman oh. Report. Hello, this is Philip McKenzie from uh, Palm Beach. Yes, sir. I just Hi, wanted Phil. to. Hello, I just wanted to give an exhortation to people because a lot of people ask, "Well, what can I do?" You know, there's so much going on. Do what Jesus did and go to the person at a time. I run a tobacco shop, and with all my customers, honestly, I put on Alex Jones on the big screen. And I tell them about Genesis 6 and the book of Enoch and try to exhort all the Christians there to actually read the Bible and study it. And all my cigarettes don't have chemicals in it, the whole the whole bit. But the main thing is, do whatever you can. We need to get as many people on our side as fast as we can because so many people are committed to, like, idolatry or, or drugs or... I used to be a druggie. Now I have purpose. I have... A reason for living. I know the meaning of life. To love the Lord your God. There you go. You know, like, I just want people to know there's, it's so easy in this difficult world. And that's, that's Absolutely. It. <laughs> it can be, especially with uh, aligning yourself with the uh, Lord's will for you and, and uh, getting rid of, of all those other things that, you know, were fillers for what was actually missing, which is, you know, a relationship with the Lord, it does become so easy. 
it becomes not only easy, it's uh, it becomes part of you and, and all encompassing in a in a great way. It, it really does. I, I saw it happen. To, there was a scientific personally. study that uh, came out last week that said they f- figured out the key to youth and, and healthy life, and it's uh, thinking of others before yourself. I thought that was pretty interesting. <laughs> it is very true. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. It makes makes all the sense. Thank you guys for letting me uh, say my piece, and God bless you guys. I love your show. I listen every hey, night. Thanks, man. <laughs> All right, brother. Thank you. God bless. Yep. All right. Great call. You know, one more one thing. Uh, uh, Philip was saying. You know, he has Alex Jones playing uh, in his store monitor uh, television. Um, a lot of people I know who have businesses do the same thing. I'm all for that. The sound guy we met. Yeah. 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 Hey, look. Uh, you know, blast the blast the Infowars through the through the walls. Rick Wiles too. You know, um, others. I mean, I mean, yeah, Rick Wiles definitely needs as much prayer and support. Uh, yeah, being censored. Um, the alternative media is under attack in, in such a big way. You, you folks, you just have no idea what's going on. I mean, it's just being under attack. It, it's and it's going to get worse. All right, area code 317. You're up next, live on the Hagman and Hagman Report on this Monday. Go ahead. Hello? That's yes. You. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't know. I wasn't. Uh, yeah, my name's Stephen. I, uh, <clears throat> I'm i here in Shelbyville, Indiana, and I just want to uh, thank you guys very much oh, uh, for everything that you guys do. Uh, I just wanted to uh, say uh, thank you for addressing the very uh, – uh, issue when it came to being alone because I feel where I'm at here. Um, I uh, it's like almost impossible with church members and many others. And uh, I've talked to uh, uh, quite a few people, uh, Pastor Langford and stuff like that. And uh, I just want to know what what is it that I, I could do on my part, even though I'm trying to reach out to a lot of people and they think I'm kind of off the wall in a sense, but. Uh, you know, what do I do on my part? I mean, as in, or at least what can I share to others? Um, I don't know. I'm a little nervous on this radio. Oh, no, no, it's just, just, just us. It's just the three of us talking. Um, you know, don't be nervous. But that's a great question. You know, what, the, the, in practical terms, what can we do, each one of us, you and me and everyone listening, Um with the, you know to to get others on board is is that what you're asking uh, pretty much yeah it's like um all my uh all my friend uh, all my friends who say they're my brothers and sisters in Christ uh it's like any time that I try to establish anything that's more than love and grace as in you know that I try to take on uh, the responsibility of I spend like almost 18 hours a day daily just you know, studying. I have a little girl, but when I try to reach out to people and I try to address it formally to them, it ends up being a argument of discussion, and it's at a point to where I'm trying to say, "Hey, we need to come together," because you both uh, have addressed the uh, very aspect of unifying each other. You know, I'm in the midst of a town, and I know that as I, I I'm a veteran. I came back from uh, Iraq uh, back in 2011. And my eyes got opened up over there, um, and I, I know what's going on around me too. And I try to try to address the my brothers and sisters, and it's like we can never. Uh, I, I, gonna, I can't. Yeah. I, don't know. I know what you mean. Well, well you're doing what you're supposed to do. I mean, planting the seed is. Um, well, let me ask this. Let me ask him a question, if I can. You said your eyes were open when you when you were over in Iraq. Um, was there anything specific that opened your eyes that that made you say, "Hey, wait a minute, you know this isn't right, or this is not what they yeah told me was there anything is there any one specific thing or two or three uh, i can I can actually <clears throat> I could tell you at a few places that I was at in Iraq um I was in Kurdistan um up at the border of Syria and Turkey. I also was in Mosul and Talafar. 
and Baghdad, and I went to satellite bases from Baghdad all the way up. Um, now, there was quite a few things. One thing that uh, was kind of weird for me was all the um, – I can't. It was the foreign, the foreign troops, and all these, the the under. Uh, I can't like. I guess what you call them, uh, spe- not special forces, but you can't really tell that they are. But they're meeting with high top people, uh, and a lot of, a lot of movement and a lot of secrecy. That was one thing that kind of, um, and it really blew my mind because if you go and talk to a lot of those individuals over there. Now, my brother's in the military, has done three tours, and I talked to a multitude of people. Um, but to get to precisely to the point, I think some things that really threw me off was all the um, talking just to the local people, lo- the local Iraqis who spoke a little bit of, uh, you know, English and stuff, and telling me, be, uh, telling me about what really was going on uh, as the war started over there and, and, and stuff like that, and then Christians um, – I uh, being beheaded and stuff. Uh, I don't mm. know. Hopefully, that's not too much overseas uh, on the phone, and no, it kind of really took a toll because I really couldn't see why we're in a war for so long. When if you've really been over there, it it would take literally like a week. It, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but if we have all this stuff, you know, I, I couldn't see there had to be something else that was going on, and it was just actually really not about what I knew. It's about who you knew, like who you talked to, and, right. and it kind of just started all coming together. And as I came back and uh, Camp Atterbury, and uh, I don't know if I should say too much, but there was just some things that raised some questions about what they're doing over there back in four years ago, and now what is going on now here around me. I, I have a lot of questions. Um, the the whole war in Iraq is. Uh... I don't want to say an anomaly, but it's part of the, it was part of a plan, you know, the project for the new American century. Newly declassified 9-11 documents show that the involvement was Saudi involvement. Donald, uh, Dick Cheney, the vice president at the time, you can go find a YouTube video on him uh, where uh, his – why did we go to Iraq? And, and uh, he states that, you know, uh, we never had any evidence that uh, Osama bin Laden had anything to do with 9-11 uh, or, or Iraq. So, you know, why we were there in the first place, uh, that's a great question. It, it was very strange. And then we're in the time now where defense contractors are uh, basically hired yeah. mercenaries being treated better and paid more than the servicemen uh, for this country. Yeah, they, yep. that was the one that blew me out of the water, sorry. That, there was no, a ton uh, of contractors. Uh, I just want to throw that in there, That 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 what you just said, just want to throw that in there. Well, you've got personal experience then. I mean, you, you uh, know, you you can you can. Uh, I mean, your testimony. If if I'm a if I'm a a person receptive to the truth, and you tell me having been over there, this is what I saw. Yeah, the know. war was what was presented to us. There was that was not the reason we were there. It was not for war, but that was uh, what needed to be the cover story. There was I don't know yeah. what the purpose was, but there was uh, Iraq had nothing to, or Iran had, yeah Iran Iraq had nothing to do with 9/11, and there are other motives that we will only know maybe uh, when we get to the other side why actually things happened the way they did. But, but um, yeah, I'm sorry, no, sorry you. No, I, I just I just just you know I, I to the people that you speak with. Um, Patience, tolerance, and understanding as best you can, and um, um, you know, understand that you're not probably you're not going to be able to convince them. But as things continue to devolve domestically and in the mm-hmm. international realm, I can promise you, your words and your advice and warnings and information. Uh, you can go to these people and say, remember when I said this? Or remember when we had this discussion? Look what's going on. And, and gradually, you're going to become the smartest person in the room or you know, yeah. in that conversation. And I know that that doesn't mean much for no, you right no. now. But, you know. it, it makes me feel better. I think the biggest issue for me is um, it is uh, it is quite – it has made my position to be more dedicated in prayer 
Um, I, I, uh, I've been totally into prayer and studying the word, um, getting the truth, the, the very depths of, uh, of the word. I, <clears throat> you know, I've been so blessed, uh, and I, and to make a long story short, I've got a multitude of what you guys talk to, um, Dr. Michael Lake, uh, uh, Pastor Langford and Steve Quell and just listening to you guys and Alex Jones and kind of throwing these, all the things together, I, I could pinpoint things. So I try to put a paradigm shift as I associate with others. I think the part that I get is when you're in a city and when things get bad, I guess my question would be, because I can tell you some things that are going on here in Indiana that, uh, that's, you know, goes, makes sense to Jade Helm. And, uh, and I got people who don't know anything about Christ or, or anything else. And they're coming to me, uh, about questions. And I, I try to do my best to pray for these individuals to go boldly out there. I think that's the hard part is being alone, bone of being bold in my faith, trying to help others be prepared. I just, you know, I'm trying to figure out where to move, uh, for my most part. Uh, so I, I just, I'm very blessed that you guys are all in the same boat, and it feels like a family when as I listen to you guys. <laughs> we are all in the same boat, my friend. You, you know, more more than you can even imagine. And, and move, you know, when we, uh, I, I think that that will be, you'll know when and where as you pray and as you stay in tune. You know, you'll know. It'll become. I believe it'll become clear to you, um, as it did with us. Even if it's only, you know, a half a mile, or mm-hmm. two blocks, or maybe it's two cities or two states. I don't know. You'll know. Yeah. You'll know. Oh, I, yeah. I just want to just let you guys know. Um, very honoring. You guys are in my prayers daily. I. Uh, uh, been so blessed, and I hope uh, I did get to meet Coach Dave myself at, at the Religious Freedom Act at the census up in uh, uh, Indiana. Now, uh, so it was it was a very honoring experience to be able to. It's, I don't know, it's kind of surreal sometimes, even though we're all normal people. So I want to thank you guys very much. It, I want to pass on the information. Guy. He's a great guy. Oh man, he's Coach Dave. very encouraging, very uh, peaceful as you talk to him. It gives you that that sense of hope again. Uh, when you feel beat down spiritually, that's right. I'm glad he's our coach, man. J- just like I'm glad, I'm glad Pastor Langford's our, our pastor. I'm glad uh, Dave Dobmar is our coach because true leaders, true leadership, and, and yeah, I mean, talk about inspirational as well as you know, hey, you know, just take it one day at a time, one play at a time. You know, we can we can get through this. So fantastic, hey, brother. All right. Uh, hey, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for giving me your time. I hopefully got some insight uh, on uh, throwing some things out there. I could share a lot more, but I don't want to take too much time from other people. So, I got you. No <clears throat> problem. Appreciate, appreciate it. Call. Thank you, guys. All right, brother. Thank you. Call anytime. Thank you. All right. All right, man. All right. Uh, let's go now to two six zero two six zero. Thank you for holding. You're live on the Hagman and Hagman Report. Hi, Doug and Joe. This is Darlene from Indiana. Hey, Darlene. How are you guys doing tonight? Well, let me check. I couldn't complain. Okay, I know you're doing great. I wanted to call, if it's okay, and talk about the chicken situation. Yes. It's been a while since that was on the news. Uh, We had an interesting thing happen Saturday. We don't own chickens, by the way. We don't have a farm. But we went to this little country restaurant out on County Line Road, and they sell uh, eggs from some of the people that live in the area. Right. And the guy, the guy that sells the eggs, he only sells them for the price that the person charges him. So he's just helping them out. And he made the comment that the eggs were going to go up in price tremendously because of the the bird flu. And so I was questioning him, and I said, well, um, did you have any proof that there was any bird flu? Because he said an eight-mile square area in um, Indiana, and I don't know where, they came and took just took everything, the ducks, the quail, the chickens, everything. Hmm. Wow. 
And that's the first time so I heard why, this. Yeah, and that's why I said, well, was there any proof that they were sick? Because I'm kind of questioning that, especially after listening to some of the other gals calling in. And he said, well, they took them because they based their information. Now, that's these are the people that came and took all the, the birds, that they were sold to these people from somebody in Chicago. And because there was some bird flu in Chicago, they just automatically said, well, these birds are bad and we're taking them. Huh. Okay. But but we don't know the disposition of the birds that were taken. No. I I asked him if they were private owners or if they were like chicken farms or just people that had, you know, some chickens in their backyard. And he said everything. And they took everything. Yeah, I've yet to see uh, reports on actual lab work. Or uh... This is something, Joe, you and I are going to have to really get into because there's something really wrong here, I believe, because um, – and we know the, the starvation part of things, the disruption of the food chain. Um, okay. Um, wow. Eight, eight square miles? Yeah, sure that's that... what he said. That's a big area. I mean, it doesn't sound like it. Yeah, but still, I mean, that eight square miles does not sound like a large area. You know, it would. Be. Um, however, it, it's a large area. I mean, wow. Well, and they took the they took the ducks too, and I I don't know. I think if I had these animals or chickens, I would want to have some kind of proof. Yeah, absolutely. I would want to have a lab report or have them before they just came and hauled everything off. So it's just very suspicious. But I, I wanted to report that because I know there's other people that do have chickens and they're keeping an eye on this stuff, and so I thought it might just help to send some information in. Okay. Yeah, we just we just recorded this down here. We're, we're going to follow this through. Thank you for letting us it's, know about this. It's and northern uh, Indiana. I do know that. Northern okay. Indiana. Northeast okay. Indiana. All right, so, sounds okay. good. Thank you so much All for right. the information. All right, love you guys. Bye. Hey, love you too. God bless, man. Have a great night. Wow. All right, mm. let's go. Area code. Disconcerting. 248. 248, we're coming to you now. You're live on the Hagman and Hagman Report. 248. All right. Come back to you. 805, you're up next. Live on the Hagman and Hagman Report. 805. Hello. Hi, this is Tom from California, and um, I sort of agree with you, Doug, about, like, the J-15, uh, the disinformation. It seems like they, they're putting so much out. They want people to uh, tell other people about it, but on the other hand, nothing happens, and it sort of makes you look bad, and then next time around, you tell them something, and so, yeah, just like last time. You know, it, it, that's the sort of the feedback I get. Uh, I was sort of guilty of the, uh, not saying it's not going to happen, but like you said, there was supposed to be an EMP today in Texas, right. which never happened. But, but one thing that the, the, the report I heard, he said ever since 9-11, Bush since then in 2001, um, had the Emergency Act where he signed every year in September. And it's been going like that all the way up to this year. But this year, Obama signed it in May, which is sort of funny. Are, are you it's referring to the... Um, you refer the... Uh, Okay, uh, there are a number of different acts you get from the NDAA to the Patriot Act to the, uh, uh, of course, the Patriot Act uh, was sick, or uh, I'm trying to remember the length of that. But Yeah, the legislation, and then there's executive orders that need renewal every year that the presidents do. Uh, but the one you're referring to, I'm, I, 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 okay, I, I think I know which, you're, which, which part of the legislation you're referring to. Uh, that, that is consistent with, I believe it's a fiscal year. Yeah, I, every it, year, it, every president has signed it in September, except for this year, Obama signed it 
instead of waiting to September, he signed it in May. Okay. So that's what four or five months earlier, and then you get the you wonder why, since they're talking about the um, the uh, you know um, I'm sorry, lost my my thought with the uh, Jade. Uh, Helm. The Jade Helm yeah. operation, yeah. Have Very you, interesting. Have you, heard it? have you heard of J2? No. 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 Oh, this is a. Uh, oh, if you listen to this, uh, actually, it was John Wells had this um, software engineer on Thursday, it was the 11th. That's a. Uh, if that. And she had the documents and everything. If that's true, J. Helm is like a piece of candy compared to what J. Two is. I, I urge you to listen to that one. That blew me okay. away. It was it was hard to put your mind around it, and it has to do with a supercomputer that can do everything. It can. It, I mean, some parts of it. It eliminates at least a million years what they this uh, computer can do. Um, yeah, I, Doug and Joe, I hope you listen to uh, the eleventh um, on uh, Caravan to Midnight. There was uh, oh, I had me. Uh, yeah, I couldn't even sleep that night. <laughs> but, okay. Uh, anyway. And uh, one more thing is, have you ever looked into or heard of um, Daigle.com? Oh, um, yeah. Um, um, yeah. Yes. It's Google a proprietary site, I guess. Yes. Yeah, and, and where they have the data and they show in 2025, they have this um, we're down to 69 million, and even our GPD, uh, PMM, is um, like half of what it is now. Instead of making, say, the average is 50,000, it's like 15,000. And you see other countries, like Norway, took a big drop in population too. Um, but that was. Uh, I didn't know how legit that is. Uh, um, I'd watch it very, very closely the, to answer your question on the legitimacy. I'd watch it very closely. Don't forget the uh, power brokers. You know the people, Luciferians. They, um, they, they have this need uh, to tell you which, what they're going to do before they do it. So. Uh, regardless of the source, whether it is military or governmental, you know, I pay pay attention to this one. Uh, the population drop is is significant, and, and yes, it, it's consistent with a lot of other um, sites that and sources that state that right, we're going right. to have a pop, calling of our population, but it, it, which is consistent with the. With the Larry Grathwall uh, Bill Ayers scenario back in the uh, uh, early eighties, oh, yeah. you know, so, right? And, and, and I, I, it's Georgia Guidestones. You know, I was wondering if you're ever going to have Bob Fletcher back on. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm back yeah, on. I, yeah, I'm not just you know it's, you hear here there about the Planet X. Um, you know, some think it could come in September. You hear. You know, it's so like you said. There's a lot of di- disinformation out there, but um, I thought he was a straight shooter. But who knows? Well, no. I, Bob Fletcher is is respected uh, by many. Yeah, we'll have him back on uh, certainly to talk about the, his uh, research and uh, and such. But uh, you know, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the, yes. To going back to what you said to. Uh, we will listen to uh, J.B. Wells. Uh, I just marked it down here, the 11th, and uh, uh, to certainly see what this computer, supercomputer issue well, is. Well, uh, John said um, 
uh, every interview he has gotten, this was the, uh, the golden one. Okay. All right. Um, but anyway, you have a good night, and uh, thank you. I thank you, and I want to congratulate the fellow that called from Indiana that was a druggie and turned his life around to the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, and thank you again. All right. Thanks for the great Bye-bye. call. You have a good night. And if that caller Bye-bye. is still listening, uh, yeah, congratulations indeed. I think it's you know, uh, hey, it's a tough thing to do, you know turn your life around when you're into that. We have four minutes left. We're going to oh, go to wow. an international caller or uh, no caller ID. Or an unlisted number. Five. Yes, hey, how you doing, guys? Yeah, I called you about uh, oh, three or four weeks ago. You know, it was about a uh, special forces guy and talking about Jade Helm and all this sort of stuff. And he said to me, he says, he doesn't know much about it. He says, but if anybody gave him an order to, um, you know, compensate guns or go against American people, he'd turn his gun on that person. So uh, you got one patriot out there, that's for sure. We know that's for good sure. to know. That's good to know. And about this bird flu stuff, I mean, somebody really needs to look at that closer because, you know, we let Ebola in the country, people that have it, fly all over the place. These people are in quarantine, but they take all these birds and they're just gone. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you really think about it. This that's that there's there's something more there to it. I mean, if anybody's out there that you know owned one of those farms or this and that, I wish they'd call you and and get really you know find out really what's going on. Well, I, I know over the next couple of days, we're going to be making the point to uh, do some of our own research, reaching out to certain people that we know. Uh, and, and that includes cross-pollination, so to speak, with other um, with other talk shows that, that have interviewed people about this. We need to find out the truth about this because it does affect a number of things from our economy to our health to our food chain to, to all of this. And, and right. you know, I, I mean, this is... It's, 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 yeah, I know. It's, it's in our, right in our own backyard. There's got to be some people right there, eyes on the ground. They've seen, they've heard, they've watched. I mean, it's it's too close to home not to know the truth. That's right. That's right, indeed. Well, we thank you very much for that, and in fact, we will uh, we we will be bringing you more information about this as we as we do you know as we can. So, very good. Well, good night and God bless. Good night. God bless you. Thank you. Thanks. One more call, maybe fit them in. Fit another call in before the end of the show. Nine one six area code. We have about uh, ninety seconds. Go for it. Nine one six. All right. We'll just. All right. Three o four. Three four. Three o four. Three o four. You got about sixty seconds. Yeah. Hey. Sixty uh, seconds. Go ahead, brother. Hey, I'm going to do what uh, uh, Dan Dale does. Nine night. <laughs> don't you love yeah. that I love that when he says that <laughs> yeah. it, it, it is kind of it, it, it's yes quaint yeah. yes I love it. it you guys have a blessed night and uh, I love you and hey, uh, brother. I'm not Thanks. the only one well, we All love right, you too I appreciate All you right, listening man. well yeah, night, night, everyone. No, it, that'll do it for this edition of the Hagman Hagman Report. Thank you so much for for listening. Thank you for your emails, and uh, yeah, thank you for being there. Just, just God bless. This week, tomorrow, Stan Dale, Wednesday, Russ Dizdar. You're not going to want to miss that one. Thursday, John, Hollywood Insider, the Satanic yes. Hollywood Agenda. Friday, Josh Peck. A little bit more about quantum physics of. Well, we're going to make sense. I mean, Josh is a guy that can make sense of the, the hard stuff and uh, quantum physics of what, what's what you, what's around us. So, thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah. It's uh, been fun as always. We'll be back here tomorrow, same time, eight p.m. Eastern. Until then, stay safe. God bless, and have a great evening. Good night. <laughs>